The story begins in the early afternoon where there is a lady walking at the market in the city. She's together with a tiny little fairy and as she walked by, she was startled the moment a chicken screamed. She wasn't scared at all but she was thinking that this chicken could feed lots of people as it was too big. The fairy on her shoulder questions what a chicken is since she's very clueless. It's something that, when eating together with someone, you wouldn't even notice if the other person dies. Our MC replied, which was overheard by the chicken owner. Her answer was just a lie but she honestly told the tiny fairy that chicken is something so delicious. The chicken owner then asked her what she wanted to buy. He stares too long at RMC's eyes which confuses the lady. The vendor then scratched his head and said that the lady was a plant mage which is very rare. Armic was shocked and asked him how he knew it, and the vendor said that it was pretty obvious. According to him, the lady is clearly a mage by the way she dresses. What's more, is that she has green hair and green pupils. He believes that whoever can see the lady could tell that she is a mage. In general, people who possess magic have similar colored hair and pupils. Just like the red eyes means they have a fire element, and blue eyes a water element. Since our MC doesn't know about this basic information, the vendor concludes that she came from a different world. Our MC then said that she was not. But the truth is that the vendor was right, she's not someone from this world. She is Seo Yu Young who used to be a tattoo artist living in the real world. Before she came here, she did her usual work and finished it. She even clearly recalls that the lady she tattooed was so happy with the result. After working, she ate her homemade meal, her biggest joy in life. She swallowed it with happiness and became so thrilled right after. Pork belly filled with gravy and a crunchy lettuce wrap, there's nothing more perfect than this, she uttered. She also partnered it with a kimchi that she prepared perfectly. While she was screaming in happiness, her phone rang. It was a notification of the new episode of the novel she read The Prince Who Can't Eat. She then decided to read it quickly and she felt pity for the male lead of the novel Felix, knowing that his wicked stepmother fed him poison food every day and the prince's palate was ruined, and so, he couldn't even put any normal food in his mouth. Although, he wouldn't die easily, being the descendant of the dragon. Yu Yung's eyes sparkled while staring at her food, thinking that the novel's male lead could not enjoy the happiness of eating something as delicious as her meal. She screams in happiness again but she suddenly hears a noise that disturbs her. Who is it? She asked. She grabbed a scissor and she trembled in fear. She went to the door and opened it but she didn't see anyone outside. She was about to go back inside but she heard a voice again, stating that she was hurt. Yu Yung completely comes out of her room while preparing the scissors. Is somebody there? She asked. She pointed the scissor on the stairs but she still didn't see anyone. She can only hear the sounds but cannot see someone. As she walked downstairs, she stumbled into something which was the tiny little fairy. She tripped and fell downstairs and instantly lost consciousness. And when she opened her eyes, she was in a world she had never seen before, in a completely different person's body. Up until now, she blamed the fairy for everything that happened to her. The fairy was sorry and said that it wasn't her fault she tumbled down the stairs while shifting dimensions. To save Yu Jun's life, she used the dragon scale she had and saved Yu Jun by turning her into a mage in this place. She becomes emotional while saying that the dragon scale she had was the only thing that could help Felix. Yu Jun didn't think that the Felix this fairy was referring to was the prince of the novel she read. She only believes that Felix is someone this little fairy is serving. As per the fairy, poor Felix is the one who can't eat anything. Yu Jun then realizes that Felix is exactly like the novel she was reading. Because of her conclusion, she was thinking that she may be spirited away into the novel she was reading. To think something she'd only read in books would happen to her. On top of that, even if she entered inside a book, this current appearance of her right now doesn't make sense to her. She cried while the fairy comforted her and told her that it was better than dying. How the hell did my body full of tattoos turn into skin as clear as white jade? Yu Jun screamed. She cannot accept the fact that all her tattoos are gone. Before she spirited to the novel she was reading, a dragon who was peacefully sleeping was woken up by many little fairies including the fairy named Erin who is now with Yu Jun. These fairies are asking the dragon to help Felix despite the fact that this dragon doesn't know when he will wake up if he falls asleep again. There's a sudden portal sipping in Erin and the dragon then hands the dragon scale to her, instructing her to bring this scale with her. Erin grabbed the scale and she sipped into the portal the moment the dragon let go of the scale. The other fairies rattled upon seeing her leaving as they all wanted to go together with Erin. Going back to the present time, Yu Jun was eating some delicious meat she bought at the Risto. The meat looked delicious but she still complained since it had no garnish or sauce. She started slicing the meat and swallowed her first bite. She was shocked and thrilled after she felt the gravy just gush out of her mouth plus the salt seasoning is also adequate. While she was happily eating, Erin beside her was sad as she remembered Felix knowing that Felix must be starving himself. How can you eat that steak so happily? Erin asked. Yu Jun continued eating while thinking that Felix turned into evil later on based on the novel. She tried to recall if she was right and she remembered that Felix's stepmother laced his food with poison to drive him out. But since Felix didn't die easily because of his poison tolerance, with the excuse of magic beast subjugation, his stepmother chased him out of the castle and became the monarch herself. But the prince instead of dying successfully subjugated the beast and became someone who could freely control the black dragon's magic. 
However, with an exhausted spirit, he chose revenge. The queen consort, the nobles that tormented him, he killed all of them, and even invaded the empire. And in that process, killed most of the empire's people. After recalling these details, Yu Jun dropped the knife and fork since she got scared thinking that she was in danger too. Even though she was saved, she was brought to a place that would change into a bloody field. She was staring long at Erin while Erin asked her what was the matter. She then sighed and said that she needs to work hard if she wants to leave a comfortable life. After eating the stick, she complains that eating just meat makes it taste really greasy. The waiter came and asked her if the food was to her liking. She then answered yes but she also asked if the steak in this resto normally doesn't come with garnish. But then, the waiter doesn't know what garnish is. Yujin then concludes that this world is in contrast to the real world where she lives since the people in this world don't eat veggies much. Even if that's how it is, she's still feeling greasy after eating just meat. She smiled widely at the waiter and politely asked where she could find a fresh produce store around. After she got an answer, she immediately ran outside and headed to the veggies vendor. The vendor welcomed her as she entered. She then looked at the fruits and veggies that were very fresh and she wondered how it tasted. Excuse me, how much does this fruit cost? She asked. But the vendor got annoyed and scolded Yu Jun which made Yu Jun startled. The vendor believes that Yu Jun doesn't have the money to pay so she told Yu Jun to leave her store. Yu Jun became silent and recalled what the waiter said. He said that since fruits and vegetables are very hard to grow, the fresh produce stores are only used by nobles. Yujin doesn't like the fact that a commoner who is the vendor is looking down on other commoners. In addition, the prices of veggies in this store are really ridiculous for her. Unfortunately, the vendor pushed her away and told her to stop looking around and get out. Just by looking at you, I can tell that you don't have money, the vendor added. Yujin was annoyed but she chose to be calm and walked away. When they came out, Erin asked why she didn't buy anything. What did you say my job was? Yu Jun asked, and Erin answered that it was a mage. Yu Jun then asked what kind of mage she was, and Erin said that it was a plant mage. She then paused the moment she realized that there was something Yu Jun was planning to do. Yu Jun believes that Erin already had an idea about her plan using her job as a plant mage. Yu Jun went to the backyard full of confidence, but she didn't even know how to use magic. She didn't know how to start, and she looked devastated, so Erin asked her if she was not going to make it. Yu Jun then decided to ask the fairy how she could do magic. Erin got annoyed seeing Yu Jun acting smug without even knowing magic. I mean, since I'm a plant mage, I just thought it would happen on its own. Yu Jun answered. Erin sighed and pointed to the necklace Yu Jun was wearing. Yu Jun was puzzled as she wondered how she could use this necklace to start learning magic. Erin then instructed her to first imbue the accessory which has a magic circle and picture the magic she wants in her head. After doing it, a plant appeared and instantly grew with lots of fruits on it. Yu Jun was panting and felt dizzy so she concluded that she might use too much magic. She was kneeling on the ground, staring at the tree she made. She was so amazed and even Erin was impressed that Yu Yun learned easily. She said that it might be because Yu Jun took over Eternum Nim's magic as well. Yu Jun becomes silent as she recalls that this person Erin mentions is the black dragon from the novel she was reading. She gets mad at Erin for not telling her about it earlier, and Erin then reminds her that she already explained to her that she got saved using the scale of a dragon. Still, Yu Jun is annoyed since she doesn't have any idea how the dragon scale looks, and aside from that, she lives in a place without magic. Don't think that I'll just know everything about this world like it's obvious. She added which makes Erin guilty and apologizes to her. She cried and seeing her like this weakened Yu Jun's heart so she accepted the fairy's apology and instructed her to come down. Erin follows her but she wants Erin to move a little closer to her. Tell me about it in detail. How did I get the dragon's power? She asked. According to Erin, after Yu Jun collapsed, she became really flustered. She rattled as she knew that Yu Jun would die at that rate. Since she didn't want it to happen, she took out Eternum Nim's scale and threw it towards Yu Jun. But it didn't cure Yu Jun's body, instead, her soul absorbed the scale. And that, Yu Jun's body disappeared from that world. While explaining everything, Erin was still crying. She apologizes once more and Yu Jun tickles her cheeks while saying that they cannot undo what is done. She sighed because she didn't know what to do anymore. When she lifted up her head, she saw the fresh fruits she made using her magic. Her happiness comes back as she realizes that she can now use magic after all. Let's use it as best as I can and get rich. She screamed loudly. Yu Jun then went back to the village and called someone who passed through her. The man she called was looking around to see who was the one calling him. Were you the one that called me? He asked upon seeing Yu Jun staring at him. Yu Jun answered yes and asked if he was a water mage. The man confirmed it but he wondered why Yu Jun called him. Mage Nim, are you not in need of any fruits or vegetables? Yu Jun asked. The water mage was silent for a second then asked Yu Jun to show it to him first. Yu Jun then got some from her subspace bag which was imbued with magic and could store various items. She decided to give a sample fruit to the water mage and let him decide if he would like to buy some. She has an orange and instructed the water mage that after cutting off the top part, score it with the knife and peel it along the cuts then they can get the fruit with a refreshing taste. She then gave it to the water mage and the man was speechless since he had never seen this kind of fruit before. Because of it, he was hesitant to taste it. No, no, I said, go ahead and try it, Yu Jun said. The man then decided to trust Yu Jun and a little later, the man decided to buy all the orange fruits of Yu Jun. 
Yujun was about to take all the oranges but the water mage noticed that her hand got soaked. He held Yujun's hand but Yujun immediately pulled it away and said that it was right. The water mage then cast water magic and used it to clean Yujun's hand. He smiles at Yujun while doing it while Yujun is amazed to see someone else's magic. The young man then asked her name and also introduced himself as Hubert. Yujun was still impressed with the magic and he answered Hubert but before she could completely tell her name, she flinched as she concluded that telling other people her real name might reveal that she was a person from another world so she decided to pick a name in this world and use it temporarily. It's Sylvia, Sylvia Arbor, she said. Hubert then utters the name she used and bids goodbye, hoping that they'll both see each other next time. Hubert then leaves Yujun and goes somewhere else. Someone then ran towards him and he immediately asked the man about the prince's whereabouts. The man then gave the directions where Hubert could find the prince but he also warned Hubert that approaching the prince is a bit difficult now. Hubert saw the prince leaning on the tree. Hubert then informed the prince that he had returned but Prince Felix didn't respond. There was also a fairy standing at the shoulder of Felix, whispering to him that Hubert had returned. Felix then woke up and saw Hubert handing him the fruits that Hubert bought from Yujun. I came across a new fruit merchant in the village and bought a fee. They taste really good, Hubert said. Felix was staring at the fruits and asked Hubert if he mentioned a fruit merchant. Since growing fruits in this world is difficult, he believes that not everyone is able to sell it. Hubert agreed with him and forced him to believe what he said, that the fruits he had just bought were really delicious. Hubert asked Felix to try it. He doesn't know if it's a good idea to eat food from unknown origins since Felix has a trauma related to food poisoning. His stepmother always gave him poisoned food and he doesn't have a choice but to eat it since his aunt is guarding him and making sure that he always swallows the food. He ingested the food for a long time so he almost lost his sense of taste and smell. Almost being unable to taste, he could only barely eat the fresh produce which provided him with a refreshing sensation. At this moment, Hubert wanted Felix to eat so he begged Felix to try the fruit even just a bit. Felix was silent for a second and then extended his hand to accept the fruit from Hubert. Hubert was thrilled knowing that Felix would like to eat the fruit. He then got first the banana and explained to Felix that this fruit doesn't need to be washed instead peeling the skin and then eating it. Felix had staring at this banana for too long since this fruit wasn't in their world so this was the first time he saw it. The fairy can even smell the fruit's aroma so she told Felix to try it and check its taste. The other fairies were amazed with the banana and Felix then opened his mouth and swallowed it. He then told Hubert that the taste wasn't bad at all. Hubert then next handed the orange and described it as a refreshing and sweet fruit. Felix then tastes one and feels how juicy it is. The taste makes him speechless since the granules of the orange are popping and bursting inside his mouth. The orange also isn't bad for him. He continued eating the fruit which shocked Hubert since Felix normally stopped eating after one or two bites, but now, he's eating the fruit so enthusiastically. He clenched his fists and told himself that he must find the peculiar wizard often, and he was referring to Yujun. Would you like to eat more? There's still a lot left, he said. But Felix this time refused and said that he was full. Going back to Yujun's POV, she was still in the village, looking at the necklace which is too expensive and she cannot afford. The cheapest necklace costs 30 gold but she has barely even made 10 gold coins. The amount of the necklace is worth 3 times her income which is why she was devastated. She suddenly got an idea and ran away, heading somewhere. The fairy asked her but she didn't respond until they arrived at the library and found the book she needed. She was so impressed by the fact that the library had all the books related to magic circles. She borrowed lots of books in her and asked her about why she suddenly became interested in other elemental magics. She then recalls the time she watched Hubert casting water elemental magic in front of her and up until now, she was amazed and wanted to know more about magic. Since she was not capable of using magic, she decided to control different types of magic. With that, she had a peculiar thought. She asked Erin if she wanted to hear it and Erin then answered yes. Do magic circles really have to be engraved in jewels? I was originally a tattoo artist, you know, Yujun stated, but Erin doesn't know what a tattoo artist is. Yujun then explains that a tattoo artist is a person whose job is to engrave images onto a person's body. It could be images or could be characters, the face of the person they long for, or it could also be the part of the person they love. At any rate, whenever she washes her bare body, it is awkward, so with this opportunity, she wants to try engraving magic circles on her body. Erin was annoyed upon hearing her plans. She screams, asking Yujun if she really thinks it's possible. According to her, people usually can only use one element in the first place. From the moment one's born, their element appears through their hair or eye color. Yujun then now clearly understood and she became so disappointed and hopeless. Erin was worried for her and asked her what's the reason for her disappointment. Yujun only said that Erin can't understand her heart. Erin was confused if she said something harsh to Yujun. Also, since Eternum Nim's magic has also gone into Yu Jun's body, Erin concludes that why Yu Jun wanted might be possible. Then, how about you become the first one? She asked. Yu Jun's head lifted up and asked Erin what she just said. Erin then clears her words, stating that Yu Jun can be the first one to wield different elements. Yu Jun's excitement came back in an instant and she became hopeful again. As expected, you definitely seem like a fairy seeing you recover your courage. She stated. She then starts to think about her plans but she remembers that she doesn't have a needle nor an ink. 
She was poking the table while thinking until she got an idea. She comes out from the library and Erin asks what she was trying to do this time. She then said that she could make a tattoo ink since she doesn't have one to use. She was confident that she could still use a method that had been used for a long time. Erin sighed and reminded her not to forget to take a break. Still, Yu Jun casts a spell, calling a pine tree to grant her an ash powder. Meanwhile, Yu Jun and Erin were coughing because of the strong smoke coming from the fire of a pine tree Yu Jun made. Just how many times are we gonna do this? We've already collected tons of this pitch black powder, Erin said. She looked so tired at this moment but Yu Jun told her that they aren't done yet since they have to keep doing this in their spare time. Erin was so exhausted and screamed, what the hell are we working so hard for? After a long time, they are finally done and Erin immediately lays down on the ground while Yu Jun massages her and tells her to rest the work back again a while. Erin rolled on the side and asked Yu Jun what kind of magic she even wanted to use to go through all this trouble. Yu Jun then answered that she just wants simple magic that will also help in her daily life, not having to bring water every time she has to cook or wash up. If she could create a small amount of water instantly, it would be great for her. Also, a magic which she doesn't need to strike rocks every time she needs to make a fire. A kind of magic that lets fire would light up with a single gesture. If that happens, she is confident that cooking will be easier for her. She lay down on the floor while Erin said that Yu Jun really does like to eat tasty food. Yu Jun rolled over and answered yes. She then gets up and tells Erin that they should now start working again. She prepared the ash powder and checked it. It was her first time making it and she was impressed that she made it perfectly fine. Since it's going to be carved on the skin, using the best possible feed, and making the lotus pine and by burning quality pine wood was really tiring. From cutting the wood, burning it, drying it, and grinding it until now. She really appreciates Erin for working up with her. About the needle, she instantly obtained it from the blacksmith. She disinfected it in boiling water and prepared a warm cloth that dried under sunlight. This time, her tattoo preparation is complete and she gets more and more excited. That's some tenacity. Are the preparations finally really complete? Erin asked, but Eugen only said that she would now start her art. She then removed her cloak and Erin was still clueless about what she would do on her body. Eugen pushed her away and told her that she could not carve her own body with her clothes on. She started by transferring the prepared sketch into her skin. Erin was impressed after seeing the sketch. Eugen then gets the needle to start drawing the lines. She then pierced her own skin and seeing her doing it makes Erin crazy and asks her if she isn't hurt. Eugen then said that it was nothing compared to the result she'll achieve after. In addition, she had already embroidered her whole body before. After a few hours, night had almost come and Eugen was finally done. Erin feels pity for her seeing her skin become red and swollen up. But then, the pain is just nothing for Eugen since she knows it will get better in no time. She extended her arm and said that she now needed to try out whether it would work or not. She closed her eyes and she felt the black dragon's magic inside her flowing towards the magic circle. She opened her eyes and saw water floating. In front of her is Erin, informing her that her water magic is successfully working. Yujin smiles in happiness since she didn't expect that it would work in just one try. She then also activates fire and wind magic circles while wondering if it would work too. And luckily, she made it which startled Erin since Juyun didn't warn her. Yujin laughed and told Erin that she would try to master intermediate magic by tomorrow. Erin then told her not to be greedy and take everything slow. The next day, Yu Jun was in the village again early in the morning and sold a lot of fruits. While she was counting her money, someone came, riding in a cavalry. It was Hubert, asking her if all her fruits had been sold out. Yu Jun was confused at first but then she realized that it was Hubert, the water mage. Did you come to buy fruits? I just sold all the ones I prepared. There's none left, she said. At the same time, Erin is calling Hubert but Hubert doesn't see her and only feels that something is circling him. Erin and the other fairies can only be seen by Felix and Yu Jun are known as Sylvia in this world who possessed the black dragon's magic. This time, Eugen remembers that Hubert is the subordinate of Felix in the novel. Is that so? Our captain is someone who usually doesn't eat much, but he likes the young Miss Fruits but they always sell out instantly. Hubert stated. Eugen then proudly smiled knowing that her fruits are quite something after all. Her smile was gone the moment Hubert asked her to obtain more fruits. As what she remembers, the novel's male lead Felix should be having a hard time and not being able to eat properly. Besides, she also feels bad for Felix. For her, a person does have to leave a life worth living. Since Erin also worried for Felix too much, she was thinking of helping the novel's male lead a bit. She told Hubert that she doesn't have the fruits on her at the moment. Hubert was dumbfounded since Yu Jun's fruit was the food Felix wanted to eat. Yu Jun then said that she still had some materials left at his house and she offered Hubert to accompany her to her home. Hubert agreed and they immediately went to the house of Yu Jun and Erin. As they entered, Hubert looked around to observe the house of Yu Jun. He was so silent while waiting for the lady and Yu Jun then went back to him with fruits on a plate and pear juice. It was the first time Hubert saw this prep food so he asked Yu Jun about it. Yu Jun then told him that it was an assorted dried fruit and a pear juice which is a good snack that will surely quench his thirst. Hubert was so amazed with its uniqueness and even Erin had the same reaction as him. Yu Jun then went back to the kitchen, telling Hubert to enjoy the food while waiting for her. Bon appetit. Hubert uttered and swallowed one fruit. Yu Jun on the other hand prepared herself and she was so happy with what she was doing. 
She then washed all the veggies and used her wind spell to slice the veggies into wide and thin pieces. She sprinkles some salt and pepper and pours some of her homemade olive oil into the pan and sautés the vegetables with minced garlic and onions. Now, for the mashed tomatoes, she made it as her tomato sauce. She then poured the sauce over the vegetables, grated some cheese on top, then baked it. After 25 minutes, her ratatouille is finally done. He then gets a little to taste it and she is so satisfied to have magic in her cooking as it makes her easier and faster. After tasting her own recipe, she was so thrilled as it was so tasty. She then beat a huge big egg and mixed it with the chopped vegetables then cooked it carefully until it became a rolled egg. She also has perfectly cooked steak. She simply put salt and pepper to her vegetable salad with a slight drizzle of olive oil and lemon slices. She puts everything in a lunchbox and pairs it with fruit juices. She made it all for the servants of Felix. Now for Felix, she went to her backyard, wondering what food she would cook. Hubert doesn't know what Yujun is doing. He was just enjoying the fruits and he couldn't believe it tasted very delicious. Yujun then came back and apologized to him for taking so long. Hubert then swallowed everything inside his mouth and told Yujun that everything was fine. Meanwhile, Hubert was speechless after seeing lots of lunchboxes and a bottle of juice given by Yujun. He asked Yujun about it and Yujun said that she personally prepared everything for Hubert as a bribe to make sure he'll come back again. Erin also asked Yujun why she cooked too much. She was so emotional as she concluded that Yujun made a lot so that Felix could eat too. Yujun also packed oranges and other fruits so that Felix could take it. How did you manage to do all this in such a short amount of time? Hubert asked. Yujun then answered that she packed the fruits before this so it isn't impressive at all. She was keeping the fact that she was using elemental magic a secret for now. Hubert then held her hand and sincerely gave thanks to her. You're welcome. I'm the one who should be thankful. Just think of it as a present to make you my regular customer. Yujun replied. Of course, I would gladly be a regular. Hubert said with sparkling eyes which made Yujun think it was dangerous. Hubert then leaves, waving goodbye to Yujun and the same as Yujun to him. After Hubert leaves, Erin then calls Yujun in the name Sylvia. Yujun then glanced at her and she then gave thanks to Yujun despite that she feels shy. Yujun also mentions that Erin kept sticking around Hubert and she asked the little fairy why she didn't come with Hubert if she already misses Felix. Erin then replied that it is because she messed up everything so she was afraid other fairies wouldn't like to see her. Since she worries too much, Yujun invites her to eat to lift up her spirit. Erin's excitement came back knowing that everything Yujun's recipe was the best. They both then head to the kitchen to find something to cook and eat. Meanwhile, Hubert came back to their camp. He went directly to Felix and he greeted Felix by addressing him as Majesty but Felix told him to call him chief since they were outside and also, he is now the chief of the Kraven mercenaries. Hubert then agreed and gave the mangosteen to Felix. It was the first time Felix saw this fruit so he became curious again. He wondered what it tasted like so he didn't waste a lot of time and immediately tasted it. The fairies were also curious and they all wanted to taste it so Felix let them all dig in. The fairies were so excited and were enjoying its taste. While Felix is looking at them, he remembers Erin who is always worried for him and makes way for him to eat something. He feels sad since it has already been three years since Erin disappeared and hasn't come back yet. He wondered if Erin was unable to return or if she had no intention of coming back. He wasn't aware that Erin was just near to him and was now together with Yu Jun, but he could not hold himself to think since he was very worried without knowing that Erin was safe in the hands of a person coming from a different world. Meanwhile, Hubert had a chit-chat with his comrade. They talked about Felix's evil stepmother who is now the crown queen for half a year. Hubert was mad and said that those nobles only looked for their own profit and had almost forgotten who the genuine successor to the throne was. His comrade then said that there was nothing they could do since Felix was regarded as missing. They were both hopeless and felt so down. The green-haired man then asked if Felix was taking a meal properly. Hubert then smiled and answered that he thinks Felix likes the fruits from the store that he has become a regular of. His comrade was so happy and relieved. They were both worried since Felix usually didn't even try to taste his food. Now, Hubert was planning to procure rations there from now on. He wants him and his comrade to reorganize their course for the magic beast subjugation. Going back to Yujun, she was busy preparing the meal and while cooking using her magic. She realized that she had never seen sugar in this world and wasn't even selling it in the market so she wondered if sugar doesn't really exist in this dimension. She told Erin that she was referring to a sweet powder. Erin then said that they have it in this world. She explains that she saw sugar being added to some tea when she was in the royal palace. Yujun then asked why sugar hasn't sold in the market. Erin stated that sugar can be found in the noble street but she was afraid to go back to the awful place again. She believes that sugar is probably hard to get and that she concludes Yujun now knows the kind of food that only the nobles can eat. Yujun was annoyed with it and she really believes that getting sugar in the market is very difficult so she was thinking of how she can make one. She knew that sugar could be made using sugar cane and sugar beet but she was still thinking about what other raw materials could be made into sugar. She saw it on TV a long time ago, so she doesn't remember it well. She suddenly smiled and Erin got nervous and asked her what she was plotting this time. Yujun then comes out of her house while saying that she will make the sugar herself if she cannot get it in the market since she believes there is no harm in trying out. 
She used her magic and summoned lots of sugar cane. She was so impressed that she was able to make lots of sugar cane using the magic she had. Erin touched the sugar cane and asked what plant it was. Eugen then explains that this plant is called sugar cane, a type of grass that has a sweet taste. Erin was hesitant to believe it since she never heard that there was sweet grass. Eugen then said that she wasn't lying. She then started to cut the sugar cane and told Erin that she would find it out soon after she tasted it. While in the process, Erin was just sitting above Yu Jun's head and she now becomes impressed by how Yu Jun handed magic better. Yu Jun enters the sugar cane to her house and she feels that her magic power has increased, and she concludes that it might be because she used it a lot. She then asked Erin if winter would have an effect on plant magic once it came. As per Erin, if it's opposing elements, then they'll be affected. She gave an example which is fire and water. Since it is her first time seeing a plant mage, she doesn't know much at all. Yu Jun then gave thanks to her for answering her question. At this moment, she noticed that the weather started to become chilly these days. She then immediately headed inside to make sugar. After a few minutes, she tastes some juice of sugar cane. Erin was very curious and she was too excited while grabbing the bowl from Yu Jun to also taste it. She widely opened her mouth and drank it all. She was so amazed at its sweet taste and she was confused about how a tasteless plant had a sweet taste. Yu Jun then put the pot on the fire to try boiling the sugarcane juice. She got it away from the fire the moment it boiled and checked its consistency. She then tasted it and seeing her reaction made Erin become more excited and grabbed her hair, asking her to let her also taste it. Yu Jun becomes serious while saying that it becomes sweeter than before. She then let Erin taste it and Erin commented that it is now soft and is sweeter than before. She even asked for more. For Yu Jun, that taste of it isn't the taste of sugar. She decided to leave it for a while to let it cool. She grabbed her bag and headed to the market to buy some groceries. Then, shall we head out? She asked. As she opened the door, a man appeared. The man widely opened the door which made Yu Jun startled and stared at the man in confusion. The man stood in front of Yu Jun with a smile on his face. Long time no see, Karina. The man said. Yu Jun was staring at the man, wondering who he was. She also noticed that Erin also didn't know this man either. She looks at the man's eyes and realizes that this man isn't a mage so she doesn't think of this man as an important character in the novel. The man held his hand and continuously called her with the name Karina. Yu Jun was nervous thinking that this man might know the original owner of this body she possessed. Back then, she asked Erin about where the original owner of this body went. Erin was shocked and said that it took Yu Jun so long to ask about it. Yu Jun then told her that she suddenly had woken up in this world so she was too taken aback to even think about it. As per Erin, Yu Jun moved into Sylvia's body through Eternum Nim's magic. When she found Sylvia's body, Sylvia already had no soul, which is why Yu Jun's soul could go in without any problems. Yu Jun still wondered where the original body went and she concluded that the real Sylvia might already die. Erin then agreed and added that right after Sylvia's soul left, Yu Jun's soul went at Sylvia's body. Yu Jun only found herself in this place with lots of pine tree, and after knowing everything from Erin, she started to wonder why the owner of her current body died in such a place. At this moment, the man still calls Yu Jun since Yu Jun didn't answer. Yu Jun then gets back to her senses and she stares back at the man. If I call your name, you're supposed to answer. Karina, the man uttered. With his behavior, Yu Jun becomes annoyed and sees him as an arrogant man. She pushed away the man's hand and asked him about who he was and if he knew her. This is my house. What business do you have with me? She added. The man became mad and asked her what she was talking about. He squeezes Yu Jun's shoulder and believes that Yu Jun is angry over such a thing. He said that he already informed the lady that she might have to risk her life and he definitely told her but she said it was fine. The man also mentions a down payment he received which isn't much. Yu Jun was confused and the man still continuously explained while Yu Jun believed that the man's statement might have something to do with this owner's body's death. The man turned around as he decided to leave. While walking away, he said that he didn't know Karina was alive because she hadn't contacted him, and he only came because he was just worried about the lady. Yu Jun this time stopped him from leaving. The man evilly smiles and expects the lady to ask him to come back. He assumes that Yu Jun cannot reject him, and now, his intention is to use him again to get some money. Not only did he lose the down payment he received from enlisting Sylvia and the mercenaries for the magic beast subjugation, he even got into debt. He wanted to pay off his debts, and although it was a bit shabby, he guessed he'd spend the winter at the house of Yu Jun. He assumed too much but he was puzzled when Yu Jun asked him what relationship they had. He turned around and thought that Yu Jun was just joking around, and he said that the lady was following him back then and liked him so much. He didn't know that Yu Jun was only getting a bit anxious thinking that he might be her family. Did you hurt your head somewhere? How can you do this to me? The man said, seeing as how he keeps changing the subject instead of answering. Yu Jun believes that there's nothing much between them. She then went back inside and said that she was just wasting her time with this man. After all I did, going out with an orphan like you. The man screamed in anger. Yu Jun stopped and the man told her that instead of paying him out with gratitude, she insulted him. You've seriously got a loose screw, huh? Yu Jun said. There's a limit of absurdity for her. She didn't think she'd hear such a thing here too. What nobody says when he can't say anything back, she knows these kinds of people very well. I did ponder on why I leave in such a ridiculous place. It turns out there was a parasite. 
a vicious brat abusing affection to away people around. She stated, the man feels insulted and calls her a bitch. Yujun activated her magic power to summon a sugar cane to use as her weapon. Resorting to violence against a woman, you beggar bastard. A little beating will set you. Yujun uttered. And she was about to attack the man but the man was strangled with water which surprised Yujun since she didn't use water element. The man was suffering. And then Hubert and his comrade then appeared. It turned out that it was Hubert who helped Yujun. Are you alright, Sylvia? He asked with a worried face. He stares at the man and drowns him in his water magic. How dare you try to lay a hand on Sylvia? I'll let you know the meaning of despair. He said. The man was struggling in the water which made Eugen worried knowing that this may cause death in front of her home. Hubert controls his magic, lifting up the man while Eugen is asking him to stop since they were in front of her house. She told Hubert that she didn't want to see a person dying in front of her house. Hubert didn't respond but he let go of the man. The man fell on the ground and told Hubert that it is a crime to use magic on a person. Hubert's comrade suddenly kicked the man and said that they have to finish off the scumbags. But then, Eugen told him not to do it. Do you know how much I cherish you? But now you're treating me like this just because you met another man. The man said. Eugen then hit the man's face using the sugar cane she was holding. Eugen fakely laughed then hit the man again numerous times for accusing her. What kind of relationship could you have with me when you can't even answer properly, you jerk? She said. She lifted up the sugar cane and reminded the man that she doesn't owe him so there's no money that she needs to bring to him. She then struck the ground where the man was sitting and the man was afraid as he thought Yujun would hit him. Even Hubert and his comrade also expected that Yujun would strike the man's balls. Now, I'll stop here since I don't want to see you lying here. Get lost, Yujun calmly said. She swung the sugar cane and told the man once again to leave. The man was shaking as he stood. He pointed his finger to Yujun, telling her that they'll never see each other again. He was about to scare Yujun that he'll kill her once he sees her but Yujun wasn't scared and almost hit him. The man then ran, screaming in fear, asking someone to save him. Yujun was staring at him, saying that this man kept spouting nonsense till the end. Hubert and his comrade at the same time were jaw-dropping seeing the lady being able to scare the man. Yujun then realizes that she had a customer so she turned around and asked both men if they came to buy fruits. She let them in and prepared a little bit of snacks to feed them. She also apologizes to them for showing his bad side earlier. She then asked Hubert about the man with him, and the man then introduced his name, stating that he's Dennis. Yujun then introduced herself in the name Sylvia and then asked them not to be too tense with her. This time, she prepared sweet and refreshing peach sugar cane juice, crispy but sweet banana chips, and an amazing sweet and chewy texture of dried sweet potatoes. She drinks the juice as she feels thirsty since she hasn't been moving a lot in a while. Both men were staring at her in curiosity about the taste of the juice. They both then grabbed each glass and drank it. They were both satisfied with the taste and Yujun was glad knowing that she successfully made it perfectly. The men then tried the snacks while at the same time, Hubert is giving thanks to Yujun for preparing food every time he visits. Yuhan then said that it is because she needed to treat her regular customers differently. As per Hubert, he needed to buy lots of fruits this time. But as per Yujun, she cannot assure it this time since she needed to prepare it and also her house is currently messy. Hubert then replied that it is fine as he personally came to Yujun to place an order. At this moment, Yujun feels sorry for Hubert knowing that Hubert visited in time and was able to help her. She was thinking of making it and just delivering it to the place of Hubert right after. She asked if Dennis is a mercenary and if where they are staying. As per Dennis, they were usually sleeping outside the castle walls. Yujun was shocked knowing that outside is very dangerous and cold. According to Dennis, they wanted to rent an inn and stay in rooms as well but the inns in the village are all occupied by other mercenaries. In addition, sleeping in the street isn't that bad for him since he still feels comfortable. The wind is quite chilly these days and it gets really cold when the sun sets. Thinking of it makes her worried for Felix, and also Eugen wonders if Dennis and Hubert are really fine with it. Since she felt pity for her, she ended up letting both men lend the space of the second floor in her house. Both men were surprised and Hubert asked if she's really serious. Yujun said that she doesn't have a nice house. While talking, Hubert was staring at her and became emotional thinking about who Sylvia is for always helping him. Then, is it okay if we stay here? He asked, and Yujun answered, of course. Meanwhile, Hubert and Dennis immediately went to fetch Felix. They were waiting for Felix to come out and they were both surprised that Felix agreed that they would leave at the house of Yujun temporarily. They were so excited by the fact that they would have a warm room and food for this winter and that is because of Yujun. Felix came out and rode to his horse. They all then leave together, heading to the house of Yujun. At the same time in the house of Yujun, Yujun is trying to catch Erin using the sugar cane. She asked why Erin wanted to hide in Erin then said that it is because Yujun suddenly called Felix and the two men out of the blue. As per Yujun, she knows that Erin really misses Felix. Erin didn't deny it but she wasn't ready at all. Yujun then told her that she also wasn't ready to meet Felix and the other fairies. She activates her flame element and uses its smoke to catch Erin. She pulls her into her while Erin is ordering her to let go. Yujun didn't listen to her. She sighed and said that she didn't want to use magic against Erin. Now, she wondered why Erin didn't want to meet Felix and the other fairies. Erin felt sad and answered that she wanted to meet them again. 
The thing is that she believes Felix and the other fairies would go wild when they see her since she was supposed to bring something else other than Yujun but she failed. Yujun asked what she was supposed to bring but she wasn't also sure since she didn't clearly hear what Edernam said. She was afraid Felix would interrogate her and the other fairies would surely ask where that thing she needed to bring. She also concludes that she'll be criticized once they find out the truth and would probably be mad thinking that she can't even carry out her task properly. What's more is that Felix might see her as pathetic and would choose not to listen to her and avoid her. She suddenly flees away from Yujun and leaves the house. Yujun was confused but she got startled the moment she heard someone knocking on the door. She then runs on the door and before opening it, she sighed as she also felt nervous knowing that the meal lead of the story she was reading was beyond the door she was holding. While slowly opening it, she was wondering if the prince is a man with a fierce gaze or someone cold. She completely saw the prince, a handsome and tall young man with an emotionless face. Seeing his face makes Yu Jun blush and she wonders if this man is the star fairy of the night sky according to the fairies. She was so speechless while staring at the star like sparkling in the eyes of Felix, and now, she confirmed that Felix is indeed a handsome man. Felix was so confused looking at her. Hubert then fakely coughed which startled Yu Jun. Yu Jun then got back to her senses and welcomed everyone, asking them to come inside her house. Everyone then entered while Yu Jun said that her house is a little messy right now. She then greeted both Hubert and Dennis. Hubert then told Yu Jun that Felix is the head of their mercenary group. He also introduced Yu Jun to Felix as well. Nice to meet you. I am Sylvia Arbor, a plant mage. Yu Jun said, Thank you for providing us accommodations. We'll be in your care. Dennis said. He held Yu Jun's hand and gave thanks to her once again. He keeps on saying that Yu Jun is their savior. At this moment, the fairies come out with happiness and they all feel refreshed with the home of Yu Jun. The green fairy even said that it's been a while since they have been somewhere with no dirty evil spirits. They were also glad to see fresh and beautiful plans inside. Yu Jun was staring at them and believes that these fairies are the ones are in mentions. She was smiling seeing these noisy fairies but so adorable. She suddenly felt down as she was hoping that Erin was with them. She glanced at the window, wondering where Erin went. Erin was just nearby, flying around and was afraid to go back inside Yu Jun's home. Meanwhile, Yu Jun started to prepare some food for everyone. Good thing is that she had a lot of stock up despite that the numbers of her household increased. She opened the steamed rice she cooked and she was craving for steamed rice for so long since the rice in this world would be an obstacle. For her side dishes are steamed fried pork and dried seasoned persimmons. She sliced the pork thinly, she added onions, carrots, green onions, and crushed garlic and stir-fry them together. Lastly, she cut the pineapple into small pieces and stir-fry it once then everything is done. With her thinly sliced dried persimmons which are sweet and chewy, mixing it with the seasoned sauce that she made earlier, the sweet and sour seasoned dried persimmons are done. The egg rolls as well have a lot of handmade ketchup on the top plus the salad that has lots of mayonnaise, full of apples, cucumbers, red onions, cabbage, and nuts. A bowl of rice is easy peasy. It must be delicious. Yu Jun uttered. Lastly, she has to prepare the male lead's meal. Knowing that Felix doesn't eat food that is cooked or touched by someone else beforehand, she decided to use her magic instead. After an hour, Yu Jun came back to the men and she was a little bit awkward seeing herself feeding three chicks. Both Hubert and Dennis then stood to help her and Dennis asked her to teach them the proper way to eat the food. Yu Jun then agreed with excitement and she told them to first scoop up some white rice and put it on their plates, and everything else are the side dishes. She then told them to enjoy the meal and get as much as they like since there are still a lot in the kitchen. The moment Dennis tasted it, he blushed and said it was so delicious. Yu Jun was holding a pot and gave it to Felix. Felix was confused while Hubert and Denik also wondered what plant it was. As per Yu Jun, it is a cucumber and a paprika. It is sweet and refreshing, and she hopes Felix would like it. The fairies were so excited to taste it. Hubert at the same time heard Yu Jun asking him to wash the plants for Felix to eat it. Felix is still emotionless while staring at the several fruits in front of him. Bon appetit, Yu Jun uttered. And the men, except Felix, gave thanks to the meal she prepared. Felix is still staring at the food as he has a strict standard that even Hubert doesn't know exactly about it. If the food is not up to his standard, he will never eat it. His standard is that he only eats food that has not been touched by others. If it's not up to that standard, he'll take it himself, wash it then eat it. But the food in front of his eyes now, it was as if Yu Jun knew of his standard and prepared it accordingly. He wondered how Yu Jun was able to do it despite that no one knows about his standard. Felix, why don't you take a bite? You can eat this, right? The orange fairy asked. And the red fairy also said that Huberi might have told Yu Jun about the food standard of Felix for being able to prepare it properly. This time, Yu Jun saw Felix swallow a mangosteen so she believes Felix might like it. She then swallowed some food and was thrilled with its taste. Dennis agreed that it was very delicious and he asked how she was able to make all of it. Yu Jun then replied that delicious food is the driving force of his life. Felix remained silent. He glanced at the mangosteen and opened one then let all his fairies bite some. He then continued eating, the same as the others. Meanwhile, they went to their respective rooms. Felix lay down on the bed together with the fairies. He was smiling so the fairies were glad to see him in a good mood. The fairies also realized that they were also in a good mood. 
they feel somewhat at ease and comfy. After a few hours, Yu Jun was in her kitchen, making some condiments. She believes that it needs more time to be perfectly done so she decided to check her garden for the meantime. But then, she saw Felix which startled her. She wondered when the male lead came and she noticed that all the fairies were sticking at him as always. She then walked toward Felix and observed what Felix was looking at so attentively. She was slowly moving, trying not to destroy Felix but Felix suddenly spoke which made her pause. Why are you all alone in this kind of place? Felix asked. Since he wasn't looking at Yu Jun while talking, Yu Jun wondered if Felix knew that she was behind him. Seeing all the other carrots has gone and you're left alone. You're just the same as me, Felix added. And Yu Jun feels awkward as she confirmed that Felix is not talking to her but to the carrots. Yu Jun grabbed one carrot and peeling it. He then bites it and Yu Jun concludes that the lonely carrot might remind Felix of himself. Felix is done eating the carrots in just a few minutes. He threw it and stood. As he turned around, he saw Yu Jun. Yu Jun got startled. He was surprised because Felix suddenly turned around. The fairies then fly around him and she wonders why. Felix was staring at him and she cannot believe that the male Lee didn't sense him until she got so close to him. What are you doing? Felix asked. And Yu Jun didn't know how to answer. The fairy on her shoulder suddenly said that she likes Yu Jun. Yu Jun feels thrilled but the red fairy was staring at her with annoyance. This fairy flies toward her and she feels nervous since it's hard for her to pretend that she didn't see these small creatures. The red fairy is in front of her face while Yu Jun still pretends and just stares at Felix's eyes. Felix at this moment cannot believe her staring directly at his eyes that even his subordinates avoided his gaze sometimes. At this moment, the three fairies smelled something familiar from Yu Jun. Why aren't you answering me? What were you trying to do behind my back? Felix asked. Yu Jun really doesn't know how to answer knowing that it was her garden in the first place so it's normal that she was here. Then, what were you doing in my garden? She asked, and Felix was shocked hearing the lady talk to him informally. Yu Jun believes that Felix is now suddenly doubting her. They stare at each other's eyes. Felix called Yu Jun impudent and Felix said the same as him. Hubert suddenly comes out but he was shocked seeing both Felix and Yu Jun in a scary aura against each other. Hubert was speechless while thinking. Then he becomes thrilled as he concludes that Felix is now finally showing an interest in the opposite gender. He leans at the door, thinking that it is now the best time for Prince Felix to fall in love but he was emotional that this love can't come true knowing that Felix is now disguised as a mercenary, but will surely be someone who will be the king of a country. Both were still staring at each other and they don't have any plans to make eye contact unless one of them will go first. At the same time, since Yu Jun is a commoner, Hubert doesn't want her to be the prince lover as it will be complicated. He then approached them, telling them that it's cold outside so they must get inside to avoid sickness. Yu Jun smirked thinking that he won against Felix because of Hubert. Felix on the other hand was annoyed as he was about to accept his defeat. It'd be better for you to come inside as well as Miss Mage. I smell something burning, Hubert said. Yu Jun then immediately headed inside and both men heard her scream coming from the kitchen. Since it was Yu Jun who first entered the house, Felix smiled thinking that he won. At this time, Yu Jun was sad seeing his recipe being charred. She was clenching her fists and vows that Felix would pay for what happened. After a while, dinner is done. Yu Jun served some juice and Hubert then gave thanks to her. Before they could drink it, she told Felix that it would also be nice if he would also drink some fresh juice. She got one of the bitter guard and slammed it on the table to make fresh juice from it. She then gave it to Felix and widely smiled, saying that she made it in front of the captain since he's a very doubtful person. Felix didn't respond. Yu Jun turned around with crossed arms and feeling the pressure between the two made Hubert conclude that the two had a lover's quarrel. I wish the best for all of us who will be living together from now on, Hubert said while raising his cup of juice. The three then drink together, and at the same time, Yu Jun was staring at them knowing that everything in their juice aside to her is bitter melon. Hubert and Dennis feel disgusted with the taste. Felix was also disappointed since it is so bitter to the point that he almost lost his taste buds from barely tasting it. Yu Jun believes that Felix tasted the bitterness. She then drank her juice and was thrilled with the taste. The red fairy was checking her glass and immediately reported to Felix that Yu Jun was the only one drinking something else. Yu Jun continued drinking her juice and said that it was so refreshing. Dennis then asked about what juice it is and she answered that they must drink all of it as it was healthy for their body. After several days, Yu Jun prepares food early in the morning since the three men need to leave early. While cooking, she remembers Erin. She said that Erin is very stubborn and she concludes that fairy would surely stop by every once in a while. But then, she cannot hold herself but to be worried since it's almost a week since Erin left. Yu Jun gets rid of the leftover fruits and vegetables in her garden hoping that Erin would come secretly to eat. As she was looking at her garden, she didn't see anything and she wondered if Felix ate everything. She heard a loud noise from the second floor. Still, she was worrying for Erin thinking that after everyone leaves, Erin would only eat meat and stiff bread that she hunted like before. Meanwhile, she asked the men about what they wanted for dinner. Dennis then happily answered that he wanted soup. Yu Jun was staring at Felix as she was worried since this man only eats fruits and vegetables which is not enough vitamins for his body. Felix avoided to stare at her and she thinks that Felix is acting like Erin. Felix stood while Yu Jun couldn't believe that the novel's male lead had a childish behavior. She then admitted herself that she's also acted a bit like a child. 
She then smiled a little the moment she heard Felix answer that he wants chili for dinner. When the dinner came, Felix's face was so red because of the spiciness of the chili. He grabbed Hubert's water and drank it in an instant. Yujun was smiling evilly knowing that Felix must feel like dying since she prepared a red habanero chili. Felix then carried his sword and wanted to attack Yujun while the two men were trying to stop him. They then sat down on the table to have a peaceful talk. You rascal, you took out your sword. I fed you your favorite fruits for several days just for you to take out that sword. Yujun asked. Felix with crossed arms stares at the fruits in front of him. He bit some peaches and said that fruits indeed always taste good. At this moment, he wasn't aware that Yujun realizes that he also has a cute side too. When Felix leaves, Yujun feels nervous thinking that hate is a form of affection. The next day, Felix went inside from the garden. He then heard Yujun called his name and asked him what he wanted to eat. Felix was raising his eyebrows and Yujun concludes that it might be because of his pride as a royal and doesn't want someone to talk to him informally. The citrus fruit I ate last time. That was delicious. Felix answered which thrilled Yujun as he was glad that Felix would always answer her. She then heads to the kitchen and uses her magic to summon the fruit. After giving it to Felix, the fairies were also excited to eat. Felix gave them some of it and they all enjoyed it. Yujun was staring at Felix while eating and she felt the beat of her heart. After Felix ate, he acknowledged the food Yujun prepared for him. Yujun then informs him that she already put some in the subspace bag she got from Hubert. Felix will be leaving soon. She was so silent for a moment as she planned to pluck up her courage to say what he wanted to say to the man. You know, I detest people who play around with food. I don't know why you're only eating fruits and vegetables, but it's okay to give what I give you. You need to eat meat, rice, and bread. Only then would you be healthy, Yujun said while handing over the orange to Felix. Felix was staring at the fruit and accepted it. When we meet next time, I wish you would enjoy the food I'll make then, Yujun added. The two felt awkward and were silent. Yujun then turned around as she felt embarrassed. Felix suddenly stopped him so she turned back. Felix removed the ring on his finger and gave it to Yujun. Yujun was staring at it and asked what it was. Yujun then told him to think of it as a payment. We bickered with each other while living together, but I really like the fruits and vegetables you gave me. Besides, it'll wear out quickly if you only use one jewel, Felix said while touching Yujun's hair. He then said that Yujun's mana is strangely similar to him so he concluded there wouldn't be a problem for the lady to use his black diamond. According to him, this ring is a very rare valuable item so he was hoping Yujun wouldn't sell it. Yujun then promised to treasure it. Felix then wore the ring to Yujun's finger and Yujun smiled while looking at it. Her face blushed as she gave thanks to Felix. Felix slightly smiled back at him and they both once again stared at each other's eyes, but this time with a glad aura. After a few minutes, Hubert and Dennis came with their carriage. They arranged the packed lunch Yujun gave to them and give thanks to Yujun for letting them stay in her house for several days. You're not leaving forever. You said you'll come again after you're done with the black magic subjugation. Yujun said, and Dennis then answered that they just want to deliver their gratitude. Yujun then told them that there's no need to give thanks to her since she got all the payment from them. Also, she was really hoping that the three would come back again. Dennis showed his sadness as he would surely miss the cooking of Yujun. Hubert then glanced at Felix, asking him if there's anything he would like to say. But then, Felix moved and said nothing. Yujun smiles knowing that Felix shows his childishness again. She then waves goodbye and the three men then leave. Seeing them far away makes Yujun sad. It was now quiet in her house again. She knows that she was busy with cooking and preparing ingredients but she's free now. Still, she suddenly feels down. She was about to head inside, and someone bumped behind her. She immediately grabbed it and realized that it was Erin. She was surprised to see Erin again. She let her sit on her hands and asked her where she had been. Erin only apologizes to her and Yu Jun was worried for her but she said she's fine and that she's only hungry. They both then went inside to eat something delicious for Erin. At the same time in the palace, Felix's stepmother and the current queen was searching for the treasure, but she was screaming as she couldn't find it. She was sure that everything, including the seal, was in the treasure box but now everything was gone and she believes Felix took it all. One of her maids then informed her that the duke had come to the palace and requested to meet her in the audience chamber. She then turned around with a clenched fist and wondered if she needed to see the duke just because he wants her too. Her attitude even makes the maids nervous. She suddenly smiled and told her maid to tell the duke that it'll take some time for her to prepare. Her maid then followed her order and headed to Duke Sabalissa who was patiently waiting. She politely greeted the duke and before she could say the message of the queen, the duke said he would wait. The maid then guided Sabalissa to the drawing room. He was looking at the surroundings and found no one. That person is alive, he suddenly uttered, and the maid suddenly trembled. But she didn't respond at all, instead, bid goodbye to Sabalissa. Sabalissa was staring at the portrait in front of him and uttered, I'm sorry brother, please forgive me for not keeping your will. He also stares at the child in the frame that looks like Felix, which is his nephew. He vows to protect his nephew at all costs. At this moment, Yu Jun went to the library and got some magic books to learn more. She believes that if it's conjured by her thoughts, she doesn't really have to buy magic. 
She wanted to experiment quickly so she borrowed lots of books and went back to her house. She imprinted the subspace magic tattoo on her skin and it felt painful this time but she was still able to make it perfectly. She was staring at this new tattoo of her on the mirror and she was glad with the outcome. After she was done, she tied her hair as she planned to start the experiment. She unintentionally stares at the ring, believing that this treasure is resonating with the magic circle on her body. She then held the box that had a jewel and she was thinking that a jewel without a magic circle drawn can't use magic. After a few minutes, she was very happy as she successfully imbued subspace magic on the bag with the magic circle drawn on her body. Even if she doesn't draw magic circles of each jewel, she believes that she can still use magic with just one jewel. Now, then shall we start my first lunchbox business? She uttered while carrying the box and was ready to leave. While heading their way, Yujin asked Erin if she knew why she could use magic so easily and if all mages were the same as her. Erin answered no and said that it was probably because Yujin had Edernum's magic inside her. She thinks that Edernum's scales that she used to save Yujin affected the lady. Yujin shows the ring that Felix gave to her and states that this black magic dragon ring was given by Felix. Yujin this time apologizes to Erin for being so childish for no reason and promises to treat the lady better starting from now on. Meanwhile, they arrived at the castle's second gate. As they walk near the gate, Yujin notices a lot of mercenaries around. She then prepares her lunchbox and calls some mercenaries, offering them the food she made at a low price. A lunchbox, are this food you'd bring along for magical beast subjugations? The man asked. They observed the food that Yujin prepared and realized that it was the first time they had seen this kind of food. You can't manage your meals while fighting. Please do buy one of these on-the-go lunch boxes, Yujun said. She has sandwiches, rice balls, and sweet potato wedges. Based on the looks of Yujun, both mercenaries could say that she's a mage but they wondered why she's outside selling lunch boxes. Yujun then informs them that she's a plant mage so she can't go on any subjugation quest. In addition, she also likes cooking. While they were talking, Erin above Yujun's head didn't understand them. Yujun at the same time gets some glazed sweet potato and lets the two mercenaries taste it. She also let Erin get one and Erin then immediately swallowed it slowly. The mercenaries then asked her about what food she handed to them and Yu Jun said it was her own glazed sweet potato. The men then accepted it and then asked Yu Jun if they should eat it immediately. Yu Jun then said yes and both men swallowed the glazed sweet potato together. The moment they tasted it, they felt the sweetness, smoothness, and savory of the potato itself. They then told Yu Jun their feedback and they said that they had never eaten anything like this food before. The other man also wonders how Yu Jun was able to make it. As per Yu Jun, she fried sweet potatoes along with some sugar. She was surprised the moment she heard more people became curious about her lunchbox. Two men headed to Yu Jun and Yu Jun at the same time gave the first two mercenaries free sandwiches and rice balls. Both men immediately swallowed it and the other mercenary asked them how it tasted. But then, nobody answered them which made them wonder why. They asked the same question and the yellow-haired man only showed a thumbs up as a sign of his yes. Yu Jun was so happy knowing that the men liked the food she prepared. She then gets a barley tea and the men drink it. They then commented that it is savory but also good for quenching their thirst. The yellow-haired man then decided to buy five boxes while the pink-haired man asked for the prices. Yu Jun then said that the rice ball and sandwich lunch boxes were 10 cores each. She also had caramel bread popcorn for five and a shooting barley which is five as well. The black-haired mercenary then asked for 10 boxes each and more people came to Yu Jun and asked for a free taste. Meanwhile, Yu Jun came back to her home. She was so tired but she was glad that everything she brought was sold. Erin then said that it was because the food was really delicious. My dream is to become a chief if I didn't become a tattoo artist. It'd be a very happy life to eat delicious food for the rest of my life. Yu Jun uttered. Erin carried a chocolate and asked if she was referring to a royal chief. Yu Jun then answered yes and explained that she had been a tattoo artist for the rest of her previous life so she wants to be a chief in this life. She was planning to open her own cafe and Erin cheered for her. Two had passed since Yu Jun started selling lunch boxes, and luckily, it was a big success for her. Lots of people bought many lunch boxes. She was about to count the remaining lunch boxes but a customer came whom she called Driver Nim. This man came back from the dungeon and according to him, the number of the magical beasts is increasing significantly and is exhausting. Yu Jun became worried for him and told him to always take good care of himself. At the same time, she was wondering if this man was old enough to experience this scary kind of thing. She remembers that it was written in the novel that when the black dragon was sleeping, the numbers of the magic beasts increased significantly and she was thinking if the Crobin mercenaries would be okay. She also wonders if Felix is eating well. At this moment, customers are lining up to buy lunch boxes from Yu Jun. There is also a new customer together with his subordinate. The moment this man saw that Yu Jun was only selling lunch boxes, he told his subordinates that they could just catch wild boars and eat them. His subordinate then replied that rumors say that the food of Yu Jun is very delicious and is good for constipation. Anyways, it's a famous place that sells good food and we have to wait in advance. He added, at the same time, his boss was staring at Yu Jun as he realized that the lady was familiar to him. 
He then asked Yu Jun if she was not going for subjugation anymore. Yu Jun then looked at him and the man said, I thought you looked familiar, turns out it's you, miss. A few months ago, on the day Seo Yu Jun transmigrated to another dimension, she was so clueless about where she was. She only remembers that she last fell at the stairs of her house. As she walked around, she stomped a skeleton. She was so scared and even cried in fear. She sat on the ground, wondering where she was. Then she heard someone. It was a blue-haired man riding on his horse. The man calls his captain and concludes that Yu Jun is a survivor. The man came down from his horse and asked Yu Jun if she was fine. He even wished Yu Jun to be blessed by God. His captain comes and declares that Yu Jun looks like a mage but doesn't seem to be a combat mage. He asked Yu Jun to stand and Yu Jun held the captain's hand and was confused why she was called a mage. Since Yu Jun is clueless, the captain concludes that she hurt her head. He rode to his vehicle and informed his people that they will bring Yu Jun back to the village with them. He extended his arm to guide Yu Jun to ride his horse. Yu Jun then held his hand once again and sat in front of the captain. Yu Jun was nervous at that time since it was her first time riding on a horse. There's no spare horses. Bear with it, the captain said. And he then let his horse run fast and went back to the village. They were welcomed by the guards and addressed them as Macri mercenaries. Yu Jun was looking around and noticed that the road is made of stones and there are horses and wagons around. What she knew is that this was not the place she used to leave. The captain of Macri mercenaries headed to the manpower agency together with Yu Jun and approached the attendant inside, and the attendant then asked how he could help. Well, you're the only one I can think of who'd do such a thing. You sent a mage who can't even fight into a mercenary group. The captain replied, Is it wrong to assign her a job because it's hard to make a living? The attendant asked. He then bravely said that it was Sylvia's fault for not doing her job properly. What he knew was that Sylvia could use offensive magic. He was staring at Yu Jun and stated that Yu Jun looked like a corpse. Well, only the mercenaries I introduced to you would have done a great job. Thank them for letting a helpless mage tag along. He added, the Macri mercenaries captain becomes mad and almost hits him. He was annoyed by the fact that this attendant knew it was dangerous but still sent Sylvia. I must have been a dirty and sloppy mercenary. You sent her knowing she'd a meat shield. I know how things work around here. He said angrily. He then ordered the attendant to pay Yu Jun and despite that the attendant was annoyed, he still agreed and paid Yu Jun the right amount. After they came out, the captain then told Yu Jun to try to cherish her own life no matter how hard life is. Yu Jun didn't respond since she was staring at the coins in her hands since she had only seen it in medieval movies and she wondered what this payment was all about. The captain at the same time told Yu Jun that it's harder to survive outside the castle than to pick stars in the sky unless she's a battle mage. He knows that the manpower's payment is huge but for him, it is dangerous for Yu Jun since she doesn't know how to use offensive magic. While talking, Yu Jun was not listening to her as she was staring at the buildings which she believes are medieval buildings. She was so confused and concluded that she was stuck in this place. Her eyes rounded since she was shocked and the Macri mercenaries captain asked if she was listening. Yu Jun rattled and answered yes. He was staring at the man leaving, telling her that people make mistakes from time to time and that she must look for help from people around her if she's having a hard time. No need to introduce ourselves. We're both making a living after all. Take care. He added while waving goodbye to Yu Jun. Going back to the present time, Yu Jun told the captain that she was really thankful back then. The captain smiled back at her and said that he was glad Yu Jun is doing well. His subordinate then also remembers that Yu Jun is the mage they found in the forest. This time, the iron gates opened. Yu Jun stared at the gate and she said that she had never seen this gate open even when she came to this place every day. On the other hand, the captain of Macri mercenaries believes that the knights of Viscontier are back. A smoke then appeared and the knights entered together with their cavalry. Just by staring at it, the Macri mercenaries conclude that it's a total of 800 knights and he believes these knights have pushed all the way to the magic beast's lair. He also said that no matter how much support they, the mercenaries get, it's miles apart from what the knights get, especially for the knights order under the Duke of the Corpora Empire. At this moment, Felix went into the forest and fought against the monster together with Hubert. After defeating a gigantic beast, Hubert informed him that he was extracting the essence now. Dennis was also with them and was the one who put all the essence in a pouch. Felix then declared that they had sorted everything out so they could now go and rest. Before they leave, Hubert activates his water element and lets it surround Dennis knowing that Dennis feels hot and tired. After it, Dennis then said that the number of magic beasts had increased dramatically. Hubert also added that they hadn't slept for three days. The thing he is most worried about is they almost run out of Sylvia's lunchbox rations. He asked Felix what they should do. Felix was silent for a moment as he remembered Sylvia. He knows that they bickered quite a bit but it was pretty fun for him. He also can't forget when Sylvia asked him if the food she prepared was good. He suddenly smiled and told his subordinates that they must head back. Dennis was screaming in excitement and both men then followed his order. As they arrived at Yu Jun's home, Dennis was very glad as he felt like they were going home to their family. He feels a little bit emotional knowing that they can now finally rest. They were standing outside and noticed lots of flowers and plants around. Hubert knocked on the door but then no one responded so Hubert believed that Yu Jun was not around. He told the other two men that they must wait for Sylvia to come back. 
At the same time, two fairies smelled something good somewhere. Then they saw the flowers and immediately went to the petals. They all felt purified after smelling it and they then went back to Felix and asked if they could go to the garden in the backyard since they also smelled something nice coming from there. Felix only smiled at them as his response the fairies knew that Felix permitted them which made them all excited and kissed Felix on his cheeks and immediately headed to the garden. Going back to Yujun, she's still outside the castle but they were already heading back to her house. She was so happy, which was noticed by Erin. It is because she finally found seasoning similar to soy sauce. It is called a salty seasoning which she bought in the market. The vendor gave him one spoon of it for free to taste it. She tasted it and thought that it was a soy sauce but the vendor said it was a galbus oil. She then instantly asked for 30 bottles of it which surprised the vendor. She paid the right amount and she carefully carried her storage bag this time since everything was inside. She was so excited to come home to cook something delicious. Erin then asked her what she would cook and she answered that it would be a delicious meal using her new seasoning. She suddenly paused the moment she saw the three men outside her house. Felix was patiently waiting and seeing him made Erin rattled. She then immediately while Yujun is asking her where she will go. But then, Erin didn't stop at all so Yujun's head hurts knowing that Erin is always like this. She then went to the boys and Hubert widely smiled at her with excitement. Yujun was very proud of herself for making a handsome man smile like this. She then glanced at Felix who now had no emotion but Felix looked away so she was annoyed thinking that Felix was being hard to get. Still, she was happy that the three men came back. She welcomed them and then opened the door. Thanks to your hard work, please come in, she said. And the two men replied, thanks to you, we came back safely. Yujun then told them that they would have a welcoming party today and Dennis screamed in excitement. When the night came, Yujun prepared herself to cook another recipe. She then commanded the three men to wash themselves and informed them to wash their hands every time they entered the house. Two men went upstairs while Felix remained seated and told Yujun that he had already washed up. Yujun then ordered him to take off his armor. Felix then went upstairs to follow what Yujun said. As he walked down the stairs, he heard Yujun telling him to hurry and come back down right after as she was preparing a watermelon for him. Hubert suddenly came back and was excited to eat the melon but Yujun ordered him to take off his robe. Hubert was confused and Yujun told him that she would prepare lots of delicious food so they must wear comfortable clothes. After Hubert left, she then activated her magic power and summoned lots of watermelons. She then tied her hair to clean herself and prepared to cook. She had meat and greens as she was planning to make bulgogi. She wanted Erin to have the first bite but she was annoyed after recalling that Erin left and hadn't come back. She understands the feelings of Erin but for her, Erin can't keep avoiding Felix forever. While cooking her dish, she was wondering how Felix would react after finding out Erin has been with her this whole time. She was hoping that Felix wouldn't accuse her as a thief since it was Erin who brought her to this place. For her, Felix is strangely fickle and emotional so she can't tell how he'd react. Felix is now currently at the table, staring at the watermelon together with the fairies. Hubert and Dennis were also at the table and they both smelled something delicious that made their stomach growl. Felix gets some watermelon and opens it so he can eat it while Hubert at the same time wonders what food Eugen will cook this time. He was so proud of Yujun knowing that the lady could cook many dishes and was new to their taste. After a few minutes, Yujun came and asked for some help from the men. Dennis then stood and volunteered. Yujun prepared five dishes. Dennis was drooling upon seeing it and he asked what this food was called. Yujun then said that it is called bulgogi. She instructed them to wrap the meat in the rice and leaves and dig in their mouth. She then showed a thumbs up as a sign that she permitted everyone to start eating. But then, Hubert was curious to know about the stick Yujun was holding. Yujun then said that it is called chopsticks. The men were staring at it while she said that this thing was tough to use at first but would be easier than a fork once they got used to it. Dennis stares at the fork he is holding. Yujun then asked if he would like to give it a try. And Dennis became so excited as he answered yes. Yujun then handed him the chopsticks and let him get a pair. Both Hubert and Dennis used the stick while preparing the bulgogi. Yujun at the same time continuously ate while looking at them and compared them to a grown-up men struggling with the sticks. After a few minutes, Dennis was able to make it and Yujun then said that he learned fast maybe because he is a prosecutor. Dennis then swallowed the meat and his eyes sparkled the moment he felt the deliciousness of it. He was so emotional as he said that it was very delicious. Yujun then told him to eat lots since she prepared plenty of it. Dennis continues to eat while Felix becomes curious about the stick. He glanced at the chopsticks and grabbed a pair. He then tries to use it and Yujun believes that Felix is just pretending that he's not interested. He then summoned blueberries in front of Felix and was hoping that Felix would give it a try. She already concludes that Felix would struggle knowing that eating blueberries using chopsticks is pretty hard for beginners. Felix then started using the stick but it flopped. This time, he felt challenged and tried it numerous times but he failed. He becomes so annoyed and seeing him like this makes Yujun silently happy with his frowning face. Felix suddenly glared at her but Yujun continued to eat, grabbed a meat then put it on the leaf and swallowed it. She was so thrilled with the taste while Felix was still staring at her and could not believe that she swallowed a huge amount of food with her small mouth. So good, Yujun uttered which made Felix wonder if the taste was really good. He then feels that he is drooling by just staring at Yujun enjoying the meal. 
He then cleared his throat and pretended that he wasn't interested in the bulgogi. The next day, the fairies were waiting for Felix to wake up early in the morning as they wanted him to open a mangosteen for them. One fairy wanted to wake up Felix just to open the fruit but the fairy with the pink hair said that they shouldn't wake Felix up. Another fairy then suggested opening the mangosteen themselves by just helping each other. They were imagining how to do it and then they tried to grab one but it was slippery. While doing it, Yujun saw them and believed that these fairies wanted to eat mangosteen. She didn't come out but she wanted to help them. The fairies were able to grab one of the mangosteen and tried to open it but they flopped and slammed on the table. The red fairy cried in pain so Yujun felt pity for her and was thinking what she should do. She doesn't know what she should do knowing that the fairies can't know that she can see them. In the end, she decided to help them. She entered the house and then the fairies flew towards her. She went to the table and pretended not to see them. All the fairies got near to her and touched her. She lied that she felt thirsty and wanted to eat the mangosteen. She grabbed one and opened it. She was stopping herself not to show that she adored them so much. She then left the mangosteen on the table and lied that she lost some energy and said that she needed to open a new one since the first one fell. She fell so many mangosteen on the table then stood and declared not to eat them. The fairies were so happy and grabbed one to eat it. Yujen was just outside the door, listening to their happy voices while eating the fruit. She was also happy that she managed to find a way. After that, she prepared breakfast for the three men. The men had just woken up and she informed them that today's menu is French toast. At this time, Felix paused while staring at Yujun. His face was red and Hubert asked him if he was fine. But then, Felix didn't answer but he only felt that his heart was pounding just now. Meanwhile, the three men need to leave and they promised to come back. Yujun waved goodbye to them but she noticed that Felix only nodded. She then closed the door and tied her hair while saying that she was all alone now. She glanced at the table and remembered Felix succeeded in picking up blueberries using the stick. For her, Felix is like a kid in a cute way. She grabbed the chopsticks of Felix and saw that he marked it. This time, she wonders when Felix eats her dishes. She was worried that Felix would become malnourished knowing that he only ate fruits and shrimp. She wants Felix to at least eat side dishes or rice. She suddenly suddenly and screamed, asking why Erin didn't come back yet. But then, she sat back and decided to rest for a moment since she felt tired of working too hard lately. While sitting, she was already thinking about what to eat today. She then plans to make a little bowl for Erin and also for the other fairies. She prepared a small bowl and cup and she was glad just by staring at it. She suddenly punched the table since she missed Erin and she wanted Erin to use the bowl and cup she made. She stood once again as she felt sad since it was too quiet. She lay down on her bed as she decided to take a nap. She was hoping that Erin would be in her house when she woke up. Late in the afternoon came and Yujun finally woke up and realized that she had taken a longer nap. Fortunately, Erin was already beside her, saying that she was already hungry. Yujun was startled so she ended up pulling the blanket which rattled Erin. Erin was stuck on the blanket and was complaining that it was too heavy. Yujun then removed the blanket from Erin and asked her when she came back. Erin said that she came back while Yujun was sleeping then hugged Yujun which made her fall asleep. Yujun was staring at her, believing that Erin's action was being too selfish so she was planning to give her a scolding this time but then, the moment she tried to do it, Erin said that she was hungry. Because of Erin's cuteness, Yujun feels pity for her and she cannot hold it. Am I cut? Erin asked, and Yujun answered, nope, not at all. She asked the fairy how long she was going to keep avoiding Felix and the other fairies and she wondered what exactly Erin did for her to keep running away and afraid to show herself. Don't you miss Felix and your fairy friends? Why do you run away at the slightest glimpse of them? Yujun added. Erin was hesitant to say it but Yujun ordered her to say it to her so she could understand. Since Erin won't say any words, she concludes that it was because of her. Erin then answered yes and added that it was her fault for bringing Erin into this world. She said sorry to Yujun and Yujun asked if she regretted it but Erin replied no. Everything seems like a coincidence but I don't think it's mere coincidence that you're here. She added. She concludes that it is as if Edernum the dragon, who knows everything, told her to bring Yujun and she cannot shake off those thoughts. Then you don't have to run away, do you? Yujun asked. According to Erin, they went to Edernum back then so Felix could have a proper meal for at least once. And then, she was sucked into somewhere else to make that wish come true. Everyone's expecting Felix to get a magic plate or magic bag so that he can eat properly. And now, she ended up bringing Yujun to their world so she doesn't know how to face the other fairies anymore as she was afraid that everyone would look at her disappointed. Yujun tapped her head and said that she'd be Felix's magic pocket who'll cook healthy food for him. Erin was so speechless and she became emotional. She hugged Yujun's face and cried out loud. Yujun then told her that they should eat something first since she remembered Erin was hungry. They went downstairs, and after a few minutes, Yujun made a meringue cheese omelette for them both. She then told Erin to sit at the table. Erin then noticed the small plate and she asked Yujun about it. Yujun then informed her that it was her bowl starting from now. Human bowl is too big for you. Do you like it? Yujun asked, but Erin was speechless and carried her bowl. Yujun then instructed her to cut the omelette with a knife and fork since it was hot. Erin gave thanks to her and they both started eating together. Erin then said that the food was good and Yujun told her to eat as much as she wanted. After just a few minutes, Erin proudly said that she cleared her plate. 
Yu Jun then said that they should make something savory this time. She used her magic to cook and Erin was impressed to witness Yu Jun's magic kept on improving. Do you use water, fire, wind, and plant magic at the same time? She asked, and Yu Jun just answered, look at you with your eyes wide open. You'll be more surprised when you taste the food I made. A minute has passed, and the food is finally done. They then started eating it and Yu Jun let Erin taste it first. Yu Jun then asked Erin's comment and Erin was thrilled as she answered that it was so yummy. Yu Jun then also tasted it and agreed, and she then said that it tasted better since she was eating together with Erin. At the same time in a mansion, there is a young man eating food in the terrace. He was enjoying it while the maids were staring at him and addressed him as the duke. The man sipped the cup of milk tea and he smelled the aroma of it. He rang the bell and her maid then brought him another dish. She put it on the table then removed the cover while saying that inside was a melon harvested by the chef this morning. The duke was very glad to see a melon knowing that it was essential when taking a bite. After tasting it, he becomes more surprised with its taste. His subordinate then informed him that they found a new vendor selling this delicious food and he had sent someone to the second gate which was the selling location of Yu Jun. I'm looking forward to tasting them myself, the duke replied. The next day, Yu Jun cooked her recipe, a perfectly prepared lunch box. She also had Korean pears and ginger tea. After putting everything in her storage bag, she then wore it and headed to the castle's third gate since she already sold it quite a few times at the second gate. She arrived at the third gate. She sat down while waiting for new customers to buy her food. After a few minutes, lots of people lined up to her and she told each customer to wash the lunchbox after they ate so they could get freebies from her. She counted the remaining lunchboxes on her storage bag and asked the customer in front of her how many he wanted to buy. The man then answered that he wanted 10 boxes but Yu Jun only had 7 lunchboxes left. The man said it was fine and handed his bag to Yu Jun. Yu Jun then put everything inside and even gave pear fruits as freebies. She then gave the bag back to the man and as the man opened it, he was confused after seeing lots of fruits. He then told Yu Jun he didn't buy any fruits and Yu Jun answered, she knows. I'm giving them to you because I felt bad, so you can't tell others. She added, the man was so glad and gave thanks to her. He then left and Yu Jun told the next customers that everything had been sold out. The mercenaries were sad upon hearing it but they didn't have a choice but to walk away. While they were leaving, Yu Jun informed them to come back tomorrow instead. Most of them were disappointed since they were waiting for many hours just to buy Yu Jun's meal. Yu Jun prepared to leave without noticing that a man was heading her way. She grabbed her bag and was ready to go but the man asked her to wait. Is it sold out? The man asked. He seemed like he was running all the way to the third gate as he was covered with sweat. Yu Jun then apologized to him and said that all the lunch boxes had been sold out. The man rattled and scratched his head. He grits his teeth and angrily asks why Yu Jun sold her lunch boxes at the third gate today as he has been waiting at the second gate since early in the morning. He informed Yu Jun that he had to bring a lunch box back with him so he was begging Yu Jun for at least one. He was about to grab Yu Jun but Yu Jun grabbed his wrist and gave him a ginger tea to calm him down. The man glanced at what was inside and then drank it. His eyes sparkled then asked Yu Jun about what drink it was. Yu Jun then casually answered that it was ginger tea. I'm sorry, but all the lunch boxes are sold out. I'll come here again tomorrow so feel free to come here tomorrow. I'll also give you a freebie, she said. The man crossed his arms and didn't respond. Yu Jun this time wanted to go home but the man was standing in front of her so it was hard for her to leave. She stares at the man's clothes and then realizes that the clothes and attire of this man are luxurious. Yu Jun thought that this man might be a nobleman but she wanted to avoid aristocrats since she still remembered the vendor telling her to avoid aristocrats as much as possible if she wanted to increase her sales. She then told the man that she needed to leave but the man stopped her by holding her wrist. Yu Jun looked at the man's hand and asked what was wrong with him. The man then apologizes for acting rude but he wants Yu Jun to come with him. He wasn't able to buy a lunchbox and he blamed Yu Jun for not selling at the second gate. Yu Jun ordered the man to let her go but the man pulled her and she suddenly flew away since the man has the ability to do so. The man smiled at her and informed her that they were going to see the Duke of Viscontier. Yu Jun was shocked but she was not able to run away. The Duke of Viscontier was checking some papers in his office. He said that there are only three mercenaries of the Kraven mercenary group but are very skilled. He then heard his subordinate agree and added that these three mercenaries have a performance equivalent to that of a large mercenary group. While they were discussing, Yu Jun and the man landed outside the castle. Yu Jun was screaming in fear and he was hugging the man's neck since she was afraid to fall. They landed safely and the man concluded that it was Yu Jun's first time to fly. He then told Yu Jun to get off from him as they had arrived. Yu Jun then touches the ground with her foot and then drops herself on the ground and is glad that she's alive. She glared at the man with annoyance for not giving her any warning that he would fly. But the good thing is that she has discovered she's afraid of heights. The duke's subordinate then comes out and asks who this lady in their castle is. Staring at him, Yu Jun believes this old man is in a higher status. The man then informs the duke's subordinate that Yu Jun is the one who sells lunch boxes at the third gate. He said everything that happened, including the reason why he didn't have the lunch box with him. He was so proud while saying that he brought the lunch box seller with him to personally cook for the duke. But then, the duke's subordinate was disappointed. Yu Jun was so confused and afraid as it seemed like she was kidnapped. 
She begged for mercy and she even cried because of fear. She said sorry and promised not to sell any lunchboxes outside of the castle again. The duke suddenly comes out as he wonders about what the fuss is happening outside. He heard everything from Yujun and now he wanted to know if Yujun bought the lunchbox from anyone. Yujun was speechless upon seeing the handsome man standing in front of her. She was wondering who this man was. The subordinate of the duke then informed him that Yujun was brought by the servant and she was the one who sold the lunch boxes. Yujun was still scared thinking that she would be punished this time. She started to think of what she would do but one thing she thinks is to greet the duke. She greeted the nobleman and the duke was just speechless. He then suddenly laughed and said that Yujun was in high spirits. Are you the merchant who sells the lunch boxes? He asked, and Yujun answered yes. I want to buy all your lunch boxes, but seeing as how the servant brought you here, I guess all the lunch boxes are sold out. The duke added, yes, they're sold out. Yujun answered. The duke wanted to eat the lunch box Yujun made and even his servant feels starving too. The duke heard his servant's stomach growling and he realized that it was already lunchtime. Then, I'll let you use the kitchen in the manor. Can you make me a lunch box? He asked which shocked Yujun. The duke then told her subordinate Aaron to guide Yujun to the kitchen. Yujun grabbed tightly on her shoulders and she wondered why a duke was so polite to her despite that she was just a stranger. Aaron then ordered her to follow him to the kitchen. Yujun was hesitant but she believed she didn't have any choice either. She carried her bag and followed Aaron. Yujun was looking around and saw a magnificent surrounding but was so quiet that even a single footstep could not be heard. Yujun remained silent and walked slowly but she was startled when someone shouted. She was staring at the man who shouted then Aaron entered the room where the man was. It turned out that this was where the kitchen was located. He asked Aaron to wait for a second. Aaron then asked what was wrong and Yujun then told him that it was fine for her to cook in a small kitchen or go to her own home and then bring it back to this castle. She doesn't want to have anyone around while she is cooking since she can't use magic freely knowing that it would be weird for the others to see. In addition, she must not get caught using different kinds of elemental magic. Indeed, the chef will feel offended if I let an outsider into the kitchen recklessly. Aaron replied. He informed Yujun that they have a small kitchen and Yujun then said that it's perfectly fine for her since she's most in favor of a small kitchen after all. Aaron also told her that the duke was curious about the lunchbox she was selling so he suggested Yujun make one and serve it to the duke, preferably a large portion. Yujun was annoyed but still smiled at Aaron. She then waved goodbye to Aaron after the old man told her the way, and the old man informed her that he'd bring the dash himself to the duke in an hour. Yujun then closed the door so she could start as soon as possible. She closed everything so no one could see her. He was panting after ensuring everything had been shut. She was checking the cabinets while thinking of what recipe she would cook this time. But then, there are no ingredients inside the cabinet. She was dumbfounded and checked the other storage but there was none. She was so annoyed and screamed that there was nothing inside the kitchen. She could not also make a fire since there was no fireplace. She calmed herself down and wondered if she had all the tools and ingredients inside her storage bag. She then checked it and uttered, Now, let me show you a taste of heaven. She then started moving and used everything inside her bag, combined with her magic to cook the meal. She cooked the meat in the pan and she also prepared some side dishes. She was multitasking and the moment her meat was cooked, she then sliced a little and then tasted it. She was so thrilled with its taste and she even rated it 10 out of 10. She then put everything in the lunchbox and she made a big portion just like what Aaron ordered. Everything in the kitchen was a total mess so she immediately cleaned without knowing that Aaron was heading back to her. Aaron slowly opened the door while Yujun was still cleaning using her magic, put back everything in her bag, and cleaned the pan without even touching it. She then heard someone open the door and as she turned around, she saw Aaron standing behind her. Luckily, Yujun finished everything, including cleaning. She smiled at Aaron and she was glad that she made it in the nick of time. She then handed the lunch boxes to Aaron and asked him to keep the bread separately. Aaron was startled after carrying all the lunch boxes as it was so heavy. Yujun knows that Aaron was surprised that she managed to finish everything in an hour since it's hard to make much with the given time. Then, I can go back, right? Come on, I need to get groceries since I have to run my business tomorrow. She said. Aaron didn't respond for a moment as he was thinking. He then concludes that Duke Lucino won't mind if he will let Yujun go since there are already lots of lunch boxes. He then permitted Yujun to leave. Yujun was very happy that she now had the freedom again and she was hoping not to see these people since for her, they were thieves, not paying for the food. As she was about to leave, Aaron asked her to stop. She glanced back to Aaron and asked what he needed. Meanwhile, Yujun was heading back home, carrying lots of money that Aaron paid to her. She didn't believe that she'd be paid but she was still annoyed by the fact that those people were able to make people do as they please and didn't even have the kitchen prepped. As she opened the pouch, she was surprised knowing that it was a lot and she claimed that this money was too much for her to complain. She smiled and said that she should buy a ton of stuff that she wants with this money. Going back to the castle, Aaron knocked at the door of Duke Lucino. He entered and gave all the lunch boxes. Lucino was staring at it and said that he had never seen this kind of food container even before. He also stated that the lunch boxes looked like had a considerable amount inside. Aaron then volunteered to open it for him and he uttered wow the moment he saw the delicious and nice plating of the meals. There are a lot of things I've never seen before. It's very interesting. 
he said. The maid then asked him what tea he would like to partner with the food he would eat. But then, Lucino said that he only wanted cold water this time instead of tea. Lucino started slicing the meat and noticed that the skin of the meat was red and the juices were also still overflowing. Aaron, do you remember how you went all the way to Maditishman City because I said I wanted to eat their spicy beef stew? He asked. And Aaron answered, of course, your grace. You don't know just how taken aback I was because you said that suddenly. Maditishman City was closed off, so they wouldn't let outsiders in easily, isn't that right? Lucino then laughed as he remembered it all and said that it was the spicy beef stew he had to go out of his way just to try it. He also still remembers being quite disappointed because the beef stew wasn't as good as he thought it would be. It makes her smile wider just by staring at the food Yu Jun made for him. There are even fruits and he happily says to Aaron that he never had anything like this meal before despite that he is the Duke of the Empire. He gets some strawberries and questions how can a fruit be so rich and plump. Aaron was glad to see Lucino so satisfied and was very happy. He cannot remember it all when was the last time Lucino laughed in happiness. Lucino still remembers Yu Jun's face a little and he could say that Yu Jun has quite an incredible skull for someone with a young and delicate body. Late afternoon came. Lucino was in the terrace, drinking tea. He was still thinking of Yu Jun, wondering what Yu Jun usually sells. Your grace, that food is for commoners or for purchase. You have to keep your dignity as a duke. Aaron said, well, can't you just count this as a delicacy? Lucino replied. He told Aaron not to be so uptight and he ordered him to buy Yu Jun's lunchbox every day. Aaron didn't respond for a few seconds, but in the end, he chose to answer yes to Lucino knowing that he didn't have a choice. Lucino wanted to take a proper look at Yu Jun if given a chance. But now, he cannot believe that the only thing he remembers about the lady are those turquoise eyes of her. The next day, Yu Jun headed back home after selling her meals. While walking, Erin informed her that she thought someone was following them. Yu Jun then ran as she was afraid that it might be one from the duchy. She was confused since she didn't think she did anything particularly offensive. The one following her pulled her cloth and Erin ordered the person to get her hands off but her shout couldn't do anything since only Yu Jun was the one who could see her except for Felix and the other fairies. Yu Jun turned around and saw that it was a lady. She then remembers that this lady was the fruit shop owner who kicked her out. The lady was staring angrily at Yu Jun. She blamed Yu Jun why her fruit shop causing a recent loss in profit. Technically, this lady was the owner of the only fruit shop in Carpacilia's castle, and her shop's customers were primarily aristocrats. Thanks to this, her pride knew no bounds, and now that someone who upset the status quo appeared, they found out that their customers these days know how to pick out fruits. Her companion informed her that there was a maiden selling fresh fruits outside the gate for a cheap price, and this was something the shop owner could never tolerate to happen. This is why she rushes to the castle's gate and is very angry since growing fruits is very hard. She then saw Yu Jun outside the castle and while Yu Jun was selling, she observed her and saw how happy the customers were. She also witnessed the fruits of Yu Jun which is really fresh just like what her companion said. Hey, you there, a young person like yourself. Without business ethics, fruits aren't just products that can be sold recklessly like that. You don't have a grasp of things. How can you offer to sell them as if their leftover produce offered at a discount? He angrily said while pointing her finger at Yu Jun. She was punching herself while saying that she could not sleep because of what Yu Jun did. Now, she asked Yu Jun not to sell fruits thoughtlessly. Erin disagreed with the lady since for her, Yu Jun's fruit tasted much better than the fruit shop vendors. If you seal thoughtlessly on the streets like this, I'll go to the duchy right this instant. I'll make you pay for this wench. Understood. The fruit shop owner added. She even threatened Yu Jun. And as he turned around to leave, Yu Jun grabbed her shoulder so she turned back in confusion. The vendor angrily asked Yu Jun what she needed and Yu Jun then told her that it was not illegal to sell on the streets and that she heard it herself from the duchy a few days ago. The time when she was at the castle, she asked one question to Aaron, and that was about her selling in the street and Aaron told her it was fine. In addition, about the business ethics, among the fruits she sells, she believes there are a few that this shop owner doesn't sell. The shop owner feels insulted and says a lot of bad things to Yu Jun. Yu Jun covered her ears but she heard the lady telling her to follow at the duchy. Yu Jun commanded her to stop yapping and told her that it wasn't her concern whether she sell her fruit or just give it away. Besides, people would buy wherever they wanted to and they would surely pick those fruits that would taste better for them. She also informed the vendor that she sells lunchboxes, not fruits since fruits are just a service or a freebie. The vendor was dumbfounded and she could not believe how Yu Jun thought of giving away those expensive fruits for free. She was about to push Yu Jun but Yu Jun caught her hand and said, sure, fruits can be expensive. I too understand that it's difficult to own land where you can grow fruits within the castle. But does that always mean it's something that should be so expensive? From my point of view, it's you who sells them at too high of a price. She then pulled away her hand and added that no one would dare to buy and eat fruits that are 50 times more expensive than steak for only just one piece of apple. The lady was very furious and shouted at Yu Jun, saying that she'd go to the duchy and report Yu Jun. Yu Jun wasn't affected by her scream. She also screamed like a tiger, telling the lady that there was no reason to report her. In fact, she knows that this vendor cannot enter easily since the security there is awfully tight. She suggested the lady to go at the public office instead, the place where the fiefdom officials would be. The lady feels pain in her ears while listening to Yu Jun. 
she was expecting that Yu Jun would be discouraged that she had acquired with someone in the duchy. But, it turned out that Yu Jun was trying to fight her to the end. In the end, she turned around and ran away while telling Yu Jun to wait and see. Erin was so proud of Yu Jun for being so brave. After that, they then went back home and Yu Jun still feels mad and gets angrier the more she thinks about the vendor. She entered her house while saying that she should just follow the Kraven mercenaries instead. Erin then asked her with excitement if she would go to Felix. As per Yu Jun, she was thinking of helping Felix but she's worried that if her skills aren't much, then she might just be a nuisance like she was when she first came to this world. Erin disagreed since she believed Yu Jun was now strong enough. She also had all kinds of elemental magic and could even materialize them simultaneously. Yu Jun then answered, all right, and came out of her house again as she decided to just go to the library to see if there were better books on magic circles. She wanted to prepare properly to help Felix and buy more ingredients. At the same time, Lucino had his meal which was made by his personal chef. He smelled it first and belittled it because of the strawberry jam that was so bland. Aaron asked him if he wanted some butter instead but Lucino refused. He puts down the bread that has jam and he believes something is missing in this meal but he doesn't have the faintest idea of what that might be. Aaron asked if he wanted to eat some more and he was shocked the moment Lucino ordered him to clear everything. He cannot believe that Lucino only eats a little today. The food on the table is soft bread containing plenty of milk, a sour salad containing lots of vegetables, onion soup, hand, sausages, and even an omelet. These are the meals that Lucino usually hearts heartedly without leaving a morsel behind. The maids clean everything and send it back to the kitchen. Another meal has been served. It was a strawberry that was picked by the chef early this morning. Still, Lucino is disappointed and complains about its pale color as it isn't bright red like the strawberries of Yu Jun. Aaron then apologized and said that he'd bring some fresh ones. Lucino put back the fork on the table and asked if there was still a long wait before the time to buy Yu Jun's lunchboxes. From my understanding, it isn't time yet to sell lunchboxes. However, they said she appeared in front of the castle gate shortly after breakfast. Aaron replied, Lucino was thinking for a moment, and in the end, he decided to go by himself. The next day, Yu Jun was outside the city gate and she gave green grapes as freebies for her buyer. Every time she gave it, she told the mercenaries that the grapes were very sweet and would pop in their mouth. She also gave an instruction to eat the grapes one at a time and wash it with water beforehand. Suddenly, some of her customers noticed someone coming. They were dumbfounded since the man's outfit was very familiar to them. At the same time, Yu Jun wondered what was going on with them. Lucino then appeared in front of her and the people then realized that it was the duke who had just come. They gave way for Lucino and Yu Jun then also greeted the duke to pay respect. So, you were running your business here? Lucino asked. Yu Jun didn't respond since she was wondering why a noble came out to a marketplace. In addition, she is mesmerized by Lucino's beauty since his hair and eyes stand out even more this time that he comes out in the castle. His grace has asked you a question. Why do you not answer? Aaron said. Yu Jun then apologized and reasoned out that she didn't expect the duke would personally come to a place like this. The people behind Lucino were murmuring, wondering about his reason for coming since they didn't think he would eat what commoners eat. Since there were lots of people around them, Lucino invited Yu Jun to have a talk privately. Yu Jun was annoyed but he didn't show it to Lucino and only asked if it should be right now. Aaron doesn't like how Yu Jun talked to a duke and he said that Yu Jun is very rude. Lucino then told him that it was fine and he commanded Aaron to bring the carriage. Upon hearing it, Yu Jun was shocked thinking that the duke would bring her far. With just one glance at the carriage driver, the driver then headed toward them. Lucino entered first and then invited Yu Jun to come with him. Yu Jun was just staring since she didn't want to go with the duke. Aaron sighed and told her that someone would not be permitted to ride a carriage together with the duke but through the duke's grace. It has been allowed this one time to Yu Jun so he wants Yu Jun to take this as an honor. Yu Jun feels a little bit upset and even Aaron. Erin then promised her that she'll stay by her side and protect her no matter what so she should not worry. Yu Jun then entered the carriage and told Lucino that the carriage was nice and spacious. It was also her first time to ride a carriage and Lucino told her to sit comfortably. Yu Jun feels thrilled and concludes that the duke isn't as bad as she thought he was. Erin on the other hand saw Yu Jun's face getting red. They started traveling and they were so awkward since both were very silent. Lucino wanted Yu Jun immediately about the fruit Yu Jun was selling today but he was holding it, waiting for them to arrive back at his residence. Also, he wanted to allow Yu Jun to enjoy riding the carriage knowing that it was her first time. Yu Jun at this moment was waiting for Lucino to speak but she was confused as to why Lucino didn't say a single word. Lucino was hoping that they would arrive back at his residence soon while Yu Jun couldn't wait to go back to her home. Meanwhile, they finally arrived. They were at the guest room and the maid of Lucino immediately prepared some tea for them. The fruit from before, what was it? And how do you grow such fruits? Lucino asked. And Yu Jun then answered that he is a plant wizard so her fruits were cultivated by magic. Slivia's fruits are the best. If you say otherwise, I won't let you get away with it. Erin uttered despite the fact that Lucino couldn't hear and see her. At this moment, Lucino ordered Yu Jun to take out the fruit she sells in front of the gate. Yu Jun was confused and concluded that Lucino might only call her because of her fruits. She then opened her storage bag and pulled out the grapes. Lucino was amazed and asked the name of the fruit Yu Jun was holding. 
Yu Jun then said that it is called green grapes, and Erin at the same time decided to steal one and eat it. She then tried to pluck it out but it was too hard. Lucino then ordered Aaron to take the green grapes from Yu Jun and prepare it. Yu Jun freely handed it to Aaron and informed him that this fruit isn't a fruit that needed to be peeled. She instructed Aaron to just wash them and the Duke can pluck it out one by one to eat them. After washing it, Lucino then plucked one grape and swallowed it. He was so satisfied with its taste and he felt the sweetness of the grape and its flavor that filled his mouth. He also compared it to the strawberries that his chef freshly picked. Your Grace, one should always check for poison before eating. No matter how delicious they were, I hope you will maintain your dignity for a little longer, Aaron said but Lucino ignored him as he was enjoying the grapes. He also felt a little bit of sourness as he bit into the skin of the fruit but it was also very sweet when he reached the fleshy part. He ate everything which was witnessed by Yu Jun. Yu Jun then believes that the duke likes grapes very much. Lucino cleared his mouth then asked Yu Jun what she prepared for today's meal. Yu Jun was confused so Aaron told her that the duke was referring to the lunchbox. Yu Jun then said that today's lunchbox is bossom. Inside is pork which has been boiled, not grilled. There was rice and veggies to eat with the pork, as well as potato pancakes inside. Lucino was staring at it and was amazed at the preparation. Yu Jun then instructed him that he could wrap it up by putting the pork on the pickled cabbage, along with the radish kimchi, but you much him, rice, and pickled sugar beets to top it off. She also said that this meal was also delicious when wrapped in lettuce too. Lucino can also put only meat in it to eat. It's great being able to choose exactly what he wants to put into it. Though these dandelion and angelica leaves have a slight bitter flavor to them. Beyond the bitterness, they also have a sweet taste, alongside a unique scent, which pairs well when eating the meat. Lucino then grabbed the knife and fork and all these foods were not familiar to him. He also smelled the strong subtle scent of spices that wafted up from the food. He was trying to wrap it up but he complained to Yu Jun that it was too difficult. Yu Jun suddenly chuckled since Lucino's flustered behavior reminded him exactly of Felix. She then told Lucino that bossom is a dish typically wrapped with hands. Lucino then smiled and let go of the fork and knife and was about to get some leaves. As expected, Aaron tried to stop him but Lucino still ignored him and uttered that he sensed a peculiar sensation. He then followed Yu Jun's instructions to first put the meat on the leaves but he was confused about what to put next since there were lots of options. Yu Jun believes that Lucino doesn't know what to put in his wrap so she offers help to the duke. Yu Jun grabbed out her chopstick and said, I know how to make a mean as Sam you say. She put more meat, rice, and veggies on Lucino's leaves and told him to wrap it as tightly as possible. She instructed Lucino to wide open his mouth and eat the wrap in one bite. Lucino was embarrassed by doing it and Yu Jun then said, I don't know if it comes off arrogance, but you have to eat it in one bite to get the full experience of flavors. Lucino didn't utter any word but he widely opened his mouth and swallowed the wrap. He was very surprised by its taste and Yu Jun at the same time that Lucino, the duke, really swallowed the wrap. Both were very silent. Yu Jun was waiting for the duke to speak to acknowledge the food she made. After a minute, Lucino finally spoke. He said the wrap is quite harmonious. Yu Jun was very happy hearing it from the duke. She then said that the next wrap would be her butchumuchum. Erin at this moment feels that Yu Jun is now enjoying it with the duke. But then, Yu Jun didn't answer and Erin reminded her that she was dragged into this castle without proper notice. Lucino suddenly extended his hand that had the leaves. Yu Jun was speechless and concluded that the duke might have wanted her to put food into his leaves. Erin was so mad at Lucino knowing that he had his own hand so he should prepare it for himself. Still, Yu Jun agreed to what Lucino wanted. If the duke is going to trust and follow her, then she wants to let him taste the most delicious wrap she has ever made. Yu Jun's first pick is the bossom, but you much him, angelica leaves, and pickled sugar beets. After tasting it, the unique taste increases Lucino's appetite. Yu Jun's second pick is two pieces of bossom with radish kimchi on a pickled lettuce. Though it's monotonous, the combination of ingredients makes an exquisite taste as per Lucino. Yu Jun's third pick is bossom, with dandelion leaves, and pickled sugar beets. Lucino was surprised with its taste. Yu Jun then asked him for feedback and Lucino answered that the third pick had a different bitter flavor than earlier bites, but the last one for him was more palatable. Yu Jun was very happy, especially since it was her first time seeing someone eat so well since Felix. She was so excited seeing Lucino eat everything so well. Erin sees her excitement and she concludes that Yu Jun likes Lucino more than Felix. She didn't know that it was just fun for Yu Jun to see Lucino's reaction every time he ate. She asked Lucino if he was okay with the fruits as his dessert. Lucino answered of course and Yu Jun then gladly handed him an apple. She said that this apple is smaller and has a more sour taste. She asked Lucino to taste it and Lucino then bit a little despite that Yu Jun was the one holding it. Aaron tried to stop him but he wouldn't listen at all. Yu Jun next handed a plum and next was a strawberry. He asked for some more and Yu Jun said there's a lot. Aaron was so shocked looking at them as he could not believe that Lucino was gulping down the food given by someone else without any hesitations. After eating the lunchbox and approximately 30 different kinds of fruits later, Yu Jun moves back to her seat due to Aaron's reprimanding. Lucino then called Aaron and ordered him to bring him the subspace bag. You mean that subspace bag? Aaron asked, and Lucino answered, correct. Aaron then said yes and headed outside the room. At the same time, Yu Jun was looking at him, wondering why Lucino asked for a subspace all of a sudden. 
After a few minutes, Aaron came back with the subspace and opened it. It has jewels inside and Aaron showed it to both Luchino and Yu Jun. Yu Jun then asked about what kind of bag it was full of jewels. Luchino used his magic, transforming the jewel into a tree. Yu Jun was shocked upon seeing it. This tree has lots of jewels. Yu Jun was amazed and said that it was very incredible and pretty. Luchino squeezes the tree until it gets back to its form. Aaron then concludes that Luchino would give it to Yu Jun and he cannot believe it knowing that Luchino didn't go this far for the duchy's retainers unless it's a stellar achievement. Luchino then ordered him to wrap it up and Yu Jun thought it would be given to her as a gift. Luchino suddenly tied Yu Jun's finger using the plant he got from the jewel tree. Yu Jun was confused at this moment. A ring then appeared on Yu Jun's finger, and as per Luchino, it's a simple gift in return. He knows that the ring is engraved with a magic circle so it perpetually creates jewels but it's useless if one doesn't have the jewel magic element. As their family is the only one to have the jewel magic element, this is just a celebratory gift for them. Yu Jun was surprised while Erin told her not to be seduced by a jewel. Can you really give this to me? Yu Jun asked, and Luchino answered, of course. Your food was very wonderful, especially as I had never had them before. He added that he was just grateful to Yu Jun for letting him eat new delicacies. Yu Jun then sincerely gave thanks to him, and this time, Aaron handed a gift to Yu Jun and said that this was from the Duke. Yu Jun was shocked knowing that this was the one Luchino showed earlier and she didn't expect that Luchino would really give it to him. Aaron then asked her to accept it quickly and Luchino reminded her that it was a gift in return. Well, you don't dislike what I've given in return, do you? He asked, so Yu Jun didn't have a choice but to accept it. Sylvia, surely you haven't fallen in love with that person, have you? Aaron said, but Yu Jun was puzzled. Aaron said that he would escort Yu Jun to the carriage. Up to the carriage, Yu Jun was still speechless, and even when she arrived at her home, she still could not utter anything. Aaron is asking her to get back to her senses, but it seems like Yu Jun didn't hear anything. She lay down on her bed and said that she really had a good life. Erin screamed as she was afraid that Yu Jun had now really fallen for Duke Luchino. The next few days, Yu Jun brought food for Luchino since she came back to the castle. While she was serving food for the Duke, she heard Erin keep asking her why she came back. Yu Jun ignored her since she could not let anyone know that there was a fairy with her. Why are you back in this punk's house again? Erin angrily screamed. She was blocking Yu Jun's sight, asking Yu Jun to pull herself together as she didn't want Yu Jun to fall for Luchino. Yu Jun feels dizzy because of Erin. Erin was afraid that Yu Jun would leave her for Luchino. She cried and said that Yu Jun only belonged to her. Yu Jun sighed knowing that Erin had become obsessed with her since the jewel incident. Erin pulled her nose and asked her to look at her straight. Yu Jun became mad and silently told her to stop what she was doing. Erin sunk to Yu Jun's head which makes Yu Jun think that it's as if she's Erin's cheating lover. She doesn't want to do anything with the duke in the first place. She wasn't here because she liked it and she didn't expect things to end up like this. At first, she thought Luchino was calling her because he was having a hard time eating. But the man kept on asking her to serve his meal, even if she packed the lunchbox with foods that could be eaten with a fork and she could not refuse because of Aaron who stands with his all eyes on her. She believes that Aaron doesn't like her at all. As you've finished eating, I'll pack the lunchbox, she said to Luchino. At this moment, she regretted accepting the jewelry box and not refusing when the duke asked her to ride in his carriage for her to get home. The driver of the carriage asked where they would go and at that time, she told her address, and in addition, she was hoping that everything was just a dream. But when she arrived at her home, she opened the box and saw the jewels. Because of it, she confirmed she wasn't dreaming. The next day after that, she was planning on trying to check what's the good use of the jewels but she was disturbed when someone knocked on her door. It turned out that it was the driver of Luchino's carriage and he came to pick up Yu Jun under the duke's command. The next day, the same thing happened, and even the day after. It's been a few days since she was dragged to the duke's residence with a packed lunch box every morning because of the jewels. Thinking about her situation made her feel sad as it seemed like she was stuck forever. For her, there's no one in this world who would just give those jewels for nothing and she knows it is wrong to take free things for granted. She claimed to herself that she had lost her mind because she was blinded by those jewels. I see. So you also feel that way. Luchino suddenly uttered upon seeing Yu Jun feeling sad. Yu Jun glanced at her in confusion. Then, will you come reside in the estate immediately? Luchino asked. And Yu Jun doesn't understand everything he says. Because of her reaction, Luchino concludes that Yu Jun isn't satisfied with the wage. What do you mean the wage? Yu Jun asked. But deep inside her, she believed Luchino wants her to work for a noble family which she didn't want to happen. As per Luchino, with the skill level of Yu Jun, the Imperial Palace would surely be desperate to have her. He then asked Yu Jun if she was upset and Yu Jun answered no. Luchino then told her not to worry about wages as he could give more generously than the Imperial Palace. Yu Jun was rattled since Luchino misunderstood her. Your grace, it isn't like that. I feel that this is a position that is more than I deserve. She said. How so? Did you not nod in agreement a moment ago? Luchino replied. Yu Jun was now annoyed since she knew that she didn't nod at all. She then honestly told the duke that her dream is to sell her food to everyone and wishes to be able to see the happy faces of many different people when they eat her food. Now, she was hoping that the duke would support her dream. Luchino was just silent while Yu Jun was wondering if her words worked for Luchino. 
After a minute, Lucino then said, Okay, I understand. Yu Jun then gave thanks to him, and after that conversation, Yu Jun was finally able to leave the castle. She headed back home and Erin was very glad that Yu Jun rejected the duke. It's only lunchtime now, and I'm already this tired. Yu Jun uttered, and Erin became upset and reminded her that she mentioned she'd help Felix. Yu Jun then remembers it and admits that she almost forgot what she promised to Erin. Yu Jun got used to this place before she knew it and felt like this was her actual hometown. But the fact is, it was just originally a world within a story so she was expecting that the things would go with the flow of the original story. Felix is destined to kill the queen and the nobles from this corrupted kingdom and invade the empire. For Yu Jun, she must have been quite satisfied to the point that she forgot why she made this goal in the first place. When she was almost near her house, she saw Felix, Hubert, and Dennis outside standing. Yu Jun was surprised to see the three men. She was staring at Felix and Felix then turned around after hearing her coming. They stare at each other's eyes and Yu Jun suddenly blushes. She then avoided Felix's stares and walked towards the men. She greeted them and said that she was glad to see these three men finally come back safe. She also acknowledged the three for working hard and while talking, she didn't look at them and his eyes were on the ground. Hubert on the other hand noticed Yu Jun's face becoming red. Yu Jun then stood near the door of her house and invited them to come in. Hubert headed first and greeted Yu Jun. Dennis followed and did the same thing. Yu Jun then glanced at Felix. Felix was staring at his comrades entering the house. He stopped in front of Yu Jun and Yu Jun was waiting for his words. Felix's eyes were staring above Yu Jun's head since he saw Erin. Erin was down and was about to cry out loud. Eringium, why are you here? Felix asked with crossed arms. The other fairies were also surprised to see Erin together with Yu Jun. The fairies then went to Erin and Yu Jun at the same time smiled awkwardly at Felix knowing that she was also at fault for keeping this secret to Felix. Sylvia, why is Eringium with you? Is it that you can see fairies? Felix asked but Yu Jun was stuttering and didn't know how to explain it to Felix. She smiled at Felix as if she didn't know anything. Felix glared at Yu Jun's eyes and told the lady that they should talk privately. He then headed inside and Yu Jun followed then closed the door. The two men headed upstairs and Yu Jun told them to come down after washing up. Felix is still staring at her. She noticed it and she said, Can I get you a drink first? Fine, make me some of that watermelon thing. Felix replied. And Yu Jun was glad that Felix now knew how to request something but a part of her was a little bit annoyed hearing the rude tone of Felix. She then summoned a watermelon and seeing it makes Felix hungry as he remembers how crunchy this watermelon is in just one bite. He even described it in his mind as an oasis that quenches his throat with a burst of refreshing juice. He missed the watermelon so much so he was about to grab it to eat it but he heard Yu Jun telling her that he could not eat with dirty hands. Felix feels embarrassed without knowing that Yu Jun's real intention is to avoid him for having a stomach ache. Yu Jun activates her water element and instantly rinses Felix. Felix was startled while Yu Jun laughed and told him that he was clean now and had no need to thank her. Felix was surprised that Yu Jun could use water magic. He was about to ask Yu Jun about it but he was cut off when Yu Jun grabbed his finger and guided him to the chair then let him sit in front of the watermelon. Felix was still puzzled. Yu Jun then used her magic to slice the watermelon. Felix was speechless and he heard Yu Jun telling him to eat first. He glanced at Yu Jun who was also looking at him. He wanted to ask something since a lot of things make him more confused. He looked at the watermelon and decided to eat before anything else. At the same time, Erin and the other fairies were at the same table eating some mangosteen. Erin received lots of questions from the other fairies, and one question from them is what exactly have Erin been doing for the past three years. Erin was shocked upon hearing that three years had passed. She thought it had only been a year or so if she had added up all the time she spent with Yu Jun. It's been three years already since you disappeared into that void. Felix has also grown a lot since then. The green fairy stated, Erin cannot believe that three years have passed and knowing it makes her disappointed. The red fairy then told her not to feel down as she believed that Erin would still be the same even if she was with them in those three years. At this moment, they asked Erin about what's the thing Eternum gave to her before she disappeared. But Erin doesn't know how to explain it. The other fairies then said that they were pretty sure at that time when they prayed for Felix to be able to eat peacefully. Eternum gave Erin a pouch and told her something. They conclude that it might be a mission for Erin to find something with that pouch. They also believe that there's nothing Erin has done for the past three years. In addition, they deduce that Erin avoided them all for failing her mission and was afraid they would nitpick at her. They forced Erin to say to them everything she needed to say but they were disturbed when they all heard Felix's voice telling Yu Jun to stop going around in circles and just explain herself. Why is it you're with Eringium? He asked, and Yu Jun only replied that it was a bit of a long story. Felix feels annoyed at Yu Jun so Yu Jun gets nervous and looks away from him. Good thing that they both heard the voices of Hubert and Dennis, telling Yu Jun that they're now hungry. Yu Jun then stood and told Felix that they should eat first and talk right after. She walked away, heading to the kitchen while Felix stood and told her that they were not done talking yet. Yu Jun then smiled and responded that everyone was hungry so she had to prepare some food to eat. There's a lot of time so I'll explain everything slowly, she added while raising up her sleeves to prepare cooking. Felix walked toward her and witnessed how she usually cooks. Yu Jun was just planning to buy some time. Felix talked a word behind her so she was startled since she didn't expect Felix to follow her. 
It was her secret that she uses various elements and all she can do now is turn her eyes away because she's flustered. Both of them panicked the moment they heard Dennis and Hubert asking Yujun if they could now come down since they smelled a delicious smell. Felix was stuttering while he told both men not to come down. They then heard the men say yes and told them just to call them if the food was ready. Yujun feels relieved not until Felix looks back at her and asks her if she also used the black dragon's magic. Yujun was silent. She then widely smiled and invited Felix to have a chat in the garden. After she prepared the meal, she called both men to eat, and while Dennis and Hubert were eating while she and Felix stayed in the garden, leaning on a tree, Felix stares angrily at Yu Jun. Yu Jun smiled knowing that she was now in trouble. She didn't know where to begin. More importantly, she wasn't sure if Felix would believe her. Who are you? Felix asked. And this time, Yu Jun decided to tell the truth. She told Felix that she was a person brought by Erin in this dimension. She doesn't care if Felix would believe her or not. What's more important is that she didn't lie to him. I'm someone Oringium accidentally brought from another place. She added. Felix stared at her with a serious look. As he was looking at the lady, it seemed like she was sparkling in his eyes. He suddenly paused and moved closer to Yu Jun. Yu Jun was shocked but Felix only wanted to ask her if she was someone who traveled between worlds. Yu Jun was confused and asked Felix what he meant to say. She doesn't know that Felix had asked the dragon about this once before. He has seen records of those capable of realm walking once before. He asked the dragon if this kind of magic was possible and the dragon replied that it was not magic that humans could wield. At some point, Felix concludes that the dragon is saying that it is possible. He had forgotten about the possibility of dimensional travel since then. He was thinking that Sylvia or Yu Jun might have been brought by the dragon. To be exact, Yu Jun transmigrated into a novel, but she wasn't sure if she was technically traveling dimensions. They were both sitting on the ground and Felix moved closer to Yu Jun once again. Yu Jun looked away from him and she didn't deny to herself that Felix was really so attractive. Excuse, too close, she uttered. And Felix also blushed and realized that he was really close to Yu Jun's face and body. He then stood and informed Yu Jun that they both have the same type of magic. According to him, he felt the same mana he had coming from Yu Jun a little while ago when Yu Jun used water magic on him. Yu Jun was glad upon hearing it and she concluded that it might be because of the scale Erin mentioned. How fascinating. I can't believe there's another person from a different dimension who has the same mana of the black dragon as I do. Felix said. Yu Jun then laughed and agreed with Felix. He also wondered why Erin didn't tell him something as important as this. He was mad while saying that Erin was never that obedient of a fairy before but would never forget to tell him something important like this. Yu Jun then said that it was her who told Erin not to tell him. Think about it. All of a sudden, I traveled from another dimension. And I can use every magic element. If I said that, you'd think I was crazy, wouldn't you? She added. She also informed Felix that she doesn't want to be treated like some strange person immediately. She apologizes to Felix and hopes that Felix will understand her. Felix's leg is suddenly in pain. Yujun was worried for him so she wanted to check it but she ended up touching Felix's hand. They felt awkward and they blushed after it happened. They both then decided to go inside. The next day, Yu Jun was thinking about Lucino. He remembers Lucino had virtually the same expression that he always had but she was pretty sure Lucino was somehow pouting as it. She was overthinking so much that she didn't even notice Felix entered. She was worried since this would be her first time going to Lucino after she turned down his offer. She feels something off but she cannot tell what it is. She was thinking if Lucino would do something to her for refusing his offer as a noble. Felix suddenly disturbed her, asking her what made her confused. Yu Jun was startled. Felix moved closer to her face and wondered if Yu Jun was sick since she didn't sense her presence with her head down. On the other hand, Yu Jun was speechless again since Felix was too close to her and this was already the third time. Your face is red, are you sick? Felix said while continuously getting closer to Yu Jun and Yu Jun was hoping that he would stop. Felix was about to hug her but she moved backward and said that she was fine. Why? You want something to eat? She asked. And Felix then answered yes even though his real intention was to comfort Yu Jun. He feels embarrassed and realizes that Yu Jun isn't sick. He asked for some grapes from Yu Jun and Yu Jun then told him that grapes are grey. While saying it, her voice was unintentionally raised because she was flustered. She then used her magic and summoned apple and grape trees. She handed it over to Felix and Felix accepted it and asked if the apple was the fruit he ate yesterday. As per Yu Jun, the one Felix had yesterday is called nectarine so it is different. She gets one and bites it a little. She then appreciates the juice coming from the apple. She gave it to Felix and asked him to try it himself. Felix grabbed the apple from Yu Jun and stared at it for a moment and bit it just like what Yu Jun did. It's tasty, right? Yu Jun asked and Felix replied that it was very delicious. For him, something about the apple felt sweeter than usual and he wondered if it was because his sense of taste was returning bit by bit the more he ate Yu Jun's fruits. He gets another apple and eats it. He was thrilled every time he swallowed the apple and it tasted better for him this time since he was eating it with Yu Jun. Meanwhile, Felix ate everything. Yu Jun was glad by the fact that Felix now eats a lot but a part of her was sad knowing that it's not just cooked food though. She wants to see Felix eat cooked foods now but she wasn't sure if Felix would like it if she made one. 
30 minutes had passed, Yu Jun was able to cook two flavors of porridge. She called these recipes as, let's make Felix eat food introductory porridge. She tasted it first while thinking about how she would be able to make Felix eat it. She remembers some of her friends telling her that their appetite would come back whenever they saw Yu Jun eat. Yu Jun then thinks of it as her way to make Felix eat her porridge. Felix at this moment was on the table, staring at the fruit in front of him. Just what exactly is this? He asked in confusion. Yu Jun then sat in front of him with the two bowls of porridge and her main goal was to introduce Felix to the world of cooked food. Felix is still looking at the fruit on the table, wondering if it's really edible. He glanced at Yu Jun who was enjoying the porridge so he started to open the durian fruit despite that he wasn't sure if it could be eaten. He was able to open it and touch it but the sticky juice of it sticks on his palm. Since he was clueless, he asked Yu Jun how to eat it. Yu Jun then instructed him to take the pulp out and eat it. Deep inside her, she hoped Felix would give up on trying to eat this fruit and ask for a cooked one. She then continued to eat and Felix did the same. His eyes rounded and Yu Jun then looked at him. Seeing Felix enjoying it makes Yu Jun disappointed since she purposely chose a fruit with a strong smell so Felix would give it back to her but it turns out that Felix likes it. Her plan is to offer Felix her porridge and be like, if you don't like it after eating a bit, try eating this instead. Now, she was thinking of any other way to force Felix. She doesn't know that Felix already noticed that her food keeps on looking more and more delicious these days so it's hard for him to stop himself from tasting it. He cannot believe he keeps on wanting to try it. He has never thought this way before. Now, he thinks that the yellow-colored porridge is very delicious. He was staring at Yujun every time she swallowed it. Felix was sweating, trying to stop himself. He looked back to the fruit and continued to eat and decided to forget what he was thinking. He then told Yu Jun that the fruit she prepared was very delicious. Yu Jun was annoyed knowing that she failed her plan and wasn't able to make Felix at least pay a single attention to the porridge. Her friends clearly said that whenever they saw her eating, they would gain an appetite they didn't have before. Now, she was thinking of recommending Felix's food instead and just doing a frontal attack. Looking at it now, she realizes that no one has ever recommended food to Felix even the fairies don't either. She gets a spoon of porridge and asks Felix if he wants some. Felix was staring at it and remembered his past life when he was poisoned by her stepmother. The moment he ate poison, he vomited blood and felt dizzy. His mother asked if he was fine despite the fact that she was the real culprit. Felix gasped and pushed away Yu Jun's hand. He was trembling in fear and Yu Jun was worried for him. The spoon that had porridge fell on the ground after Felix hit Yu Jun's hand. Afterward, Yu Jun was in her room and she could not stop thinking about Felix's face from earlier. It was a look of complete terror. Despite knowing why Felix doesn't eat food, she knows she is arrogant. It's not just that one has to eat for their health, it's just that it's delicious. She admitted that she's being so stubborn and came on too hard to make Felix eat. She blamed herself for what happened. For her, the rejection of food was nothing more than the distrust of cooked food made by another's hands. And it was simply Felix's own defense mechanism for protecting himself. Beginning with the betrayal from someone he had trusted. A childhood that had made Felix become wary of everything. Yu Jun thought too lightly of Felix's suffering. She was screaming in her room, admitting that she was being stupid. Hours had passed. It was already late at night but Felix couldn't sleep and he wondered why. He was also thinking about the look Yu Jun gave to him which isn't embarrassment or fear but apologetic. Back then, everyone's reaction to him not eating food was always similar. They treat them as some bizarre or eccentric person who doesn't like food, or they just don't care as if they are used to it. But, he was puzzled about why Yu Jun's stare was apologetic. He doesn't blame her even the slightest bit for his refusal to eat but he just feels frustrated for no reason. The dawn came and Felix was looking at the window and decided to jump outside. He was looking around, observing if there were people around. He then smelled something delicious and she concluded that Yu Jun might already be preparing breakfast. He was standing outside the door and opened it to check Yu Jun. Then she found out that she was right. Yu Jun was preparing too early without knowing that Felix was watching her. Felix smelled a familiar aroma and believed that it was sesame oil and eggs. Yu Jun tasted the food she prepared and Felix wanted it too. Though the food itself never gives him any desire to eat, strangely watching Yu Jun enjoying it makes him want to eat too. The food isn't familiar to him. In addition, he also wondered why Yu Jun looked sorry. He entered inside which rattled Yu Jun as she didn't know what to say to him after the incident last day. The moment Felix entered, he felt that it was very hot and Yu Jun believed that it might be because of Yu Jun's cooking. He asked for some water from Yu Jun and Yu Jun then immediately got it and gave it to Felix at a fast speed. Felix stares at it as this is the first time he got something from Yu Jun that isn't magic. He then drank it while Yu Jun was looking at him and Felix then asked for more after finishing one glass since it tasted savory for him which is very unusual for water. Yu Jun put some more believing that Felix likes it. She gave it back to Felix and Felix asked more every time he finished it. When he asked for the fourth time, Yu Jun was annoyed and reminded him that he had to eat first as he might end up filling his belly with water. She suddenly paused after realizing that she unwittingly screamed at Felix. She was also confused why Felix behaved differently this time since he usually asked what's the matter in a situation like this. Felix was flustered while Yu Jun was still staring at her. She held her chest and told Felix that she needed to talk to him. 
she immediately apologizes to Felix which surprises Felix. As per Yu Jun, she didn't mean to shout or be rude and she promised not to force Felix to eat but since it isn't good for Felix to just eat fruits all the time, even if it's hard, she wants Felix to try eating something else. Felix was squeezing the glass. He was touched that Yu Jun said sorry to him, since no one ever did before. Back then, he was forced to eat even if they knew he didn't want to. In the end, those people would eventually give up, saying it couldn't be helped if he didn't eat. But now, there is someone who is Yu Jun or he is known as Sylvia who hasn't given up on him. He agreed to what Yu Jun said. Yu Jun was stuttering as she talked since she felt embarrassed by how Felix stared at her. She feels an awkward atmosphere while Felix at the same time feels thirsty and doesn't know what to say. Meanwhile, Yu Jun was riding in the carriage of Duke Lucino. She was planning on telling the Duke that she wouldn't be coming back to the Duchy's residence with a lunchbox anymore, and today would be her last time to be here. She arrived at the castle and immediately came out from the carriage and headed inside with the guidance of Aaron. On this day, the way isn't familiar to her since it isn't the way to the lounge area. She then told Aaron and Aaron then asked her what's the matter. We're going a different way than usual, where are we going? She asked, and Aaron casually replied that the Duke wanted to eat somewhere else today so he prepared a different place for him. They had arrived and it was on a different terrace. Lucino was patiently waiting for Yu Jun. He then turned around the moment he heard someone coming. He smiled upon seeing the lady and seeing his handsome face made Yu Jun blush a little. She then prepared the lunchbox she prepared. She prepared kimbap, a dish made of rice instead of wheat. She informed Lucino that she added carrots, cucumbers, burdock, and pickled cabbage for the vegetables, as well as pineapple and beef soaked in galvos oil. She also had a s sambap made with steamed pumpkin leaves and cabbage stuffed with the same ingredients used for the egg kimbap. Not just that, there are also apples, pears, and persimmons as the fruits. The meals you make are really refreshing. How can you make such dishes? And what about the freshness of the fruits and vegetables as well? Especially, the sweetness of your fruits do not match what the empire has to offer. Lucino said. Yujun was just silent and she doesn't know how to tell the duke that she's quitting. Lucino gets some fruit while talking and Yu Jun was thinking if she should tell the duke right now or right after he eats. The duke suddenly said that he had prepared something special for Yu Jun. Yu Jun was puzzled as she didn't want to receive any from the duke again since all she wanted to do is to stop coming all the way here just to serve Lucino every day. As per Lucino, he got a personal kitchen for Yu Jun and he was confident that Yu Jun would like it. Yu Jun was shocked while Lucino explained to her that the kitchen had big tables, shelves, drawers, and a fireplace that was made of luxurious hardwood. He also added that Yu Jun can smell roses from the window and the connected terrace if she gets tired while cooking. Yu Jun asked him to stop uttering words and she got annoyed when Aaron spoke, saying that the space of the kitchen is the Duke's personally ordered for her sake. I hope it's to your liking, Lucino said. He wasn't aware that Yu Jun didn't like it at all and it was too much for her without asking permission from her. She wanted to say no but she cannot say it. She bowed down to Lucino and gave thanks to his kindness. Lucino then laughed in happiness as he thought Yu Jun liked it. Yu Jun fakely laughed while rubbing her hands. She wanted to quit but it seemed like she couldn't. After Lucino's meal, Yu Jun then went back home and both Dennis and Hubert were happy to see her back. Yu Jun sighed in front of them and she almost fell but she managed to hold on to Hubert. Are you alright, Miss Sylvia? You don't look so well, Hubert said, and Yu Jun replied that she was fine. She then went upstairs and lay down on her bed. Why the hell is the Duke doing this to me? Why is he kicking up a fuss, burdening me with a brand new kitchen? Yu Jun uttered with annoyance while punching her bed. She doesn't want to live, tied down to the duchy, doing the same thing for the rest of her life. Even when she lived as Seo Yu Jun, she hated that, so she stood on her own two feet. She doesn't care if a person is a noble, royal, or whatever. Following the duke and saying, yes, understood, your grace, makes her annoyed. She just started to get used to life in this dimension and was enjoying the little things while making a living for herself, and she didn't want to give that up. She cried and screamed until she was able to calm herself. She gets up in bed as she decides to eat and tells herself not to starve as it will only stress her. She went downstairs with just her green pants and a long white sleeve. She headed to the kitchen and both Hubert and Dennis were confused seeing her fierce look. She slammed the door and said that spicy would be best since she was stressed. Meanwhile, they ate together and Dennis's face was red because of the spiciness level of their food. He was asking for water, begging Hubert to spray water on his mouth. Hubert used his water element and then sprayed water to Dennis. Yu Jun on the other hand was enjoying the meal and she even felt a little bit better after eating spicy food. She finished everything on her plate. After eating, Hubert then cleaned the table. Yu Jun then gave them the dessert which was an ice cream. Dennis and Hubert were excited upon seeing it. As expected, it's their first time seeing this kind of food so Yu Jun informed them that it's called ice cream that is made of milk. She then started eating it while Felix was looking at it. Felix wanted to try the ice cream so badly but he stopped himself. He could not even take his eyes away from it as he was curious how it tasted. He comes to the point that he cannot hold himself anymore and tells Yu Jun that he wants at least one bite. Yu Jun paused upon hearing him. She wasn't sure if she heard it right so she told Felix to repeat what he said. At this moment, Felix was thinking that it might be safe to eat what Yu Jun was eating. He told himself it was going to be okay as he really wanted to try the ice cream. 
Everything Yujun has cooked so far for his men has been safe, and the fairies have told him many times that it's safe to eat Yujun's meal. Everyone was full of praise, saying how good Yujun's food tasted, and he was the only one who hadn't tried it yet. Above all, Yujun is the only one who treats him sincerely so he wants to trust her once. Give me a bite, he said, and Yujun was surprised that Felix now showed an interest in food. She scooped one spoon and asked Felix to open his mouth. Felix followed what she said and Yujun then entered the spoon that had ice cream inside Felix's mouth. Felix was impressed with its taste. It refreshes her after tasting it. Yujun was smiling at him and asked him how the ice cream tasted. Here, have another bite, she said and let Felix eat more. Both men were watching them and they were all shocked to see the sweetness between the two. They were eating their ice cream and they also could not believe seeing Felix eat what they also ate. When the night came, Yu Jun was in the garden, leaning on the tree, and was expressing her happiness that Felix finally ate the food she prepared despite that it was only the desert. She was also thinking about the proposal of Duke Lucino to her. As long as she stays here, she believes Lucino will seek her out every morning. At this moment, Erin suddenly came and landed on her hand. Erin asked what she was thinking but Yu Jun didn't answer directly. Erin then informed her that the others would leave again tomorrow and she asked Yu Jun a favor to make another ice cream since the other fairies wanted it. Yujun didn't answer yes or no as she was shocked to hear that the men and the other fairies would leave again tomorrow. She was sad since she was just beginning to see progress in Felix overcoming his trauma. She then remembered something. She recalls that her main goal in the first place is to change the original future written in the novel. On top of that, she promised Erin to help Felix. She just wanted to help Felix herself as well. In that case, she realizes that she shouldn't be just waiting around to meet the Kraven mercenaries when they come to visit like this, she just wants to follow them then and get out of here. I should have done this in the first place, why was I agonizing over this? She asked, I don't know what it is, but since you're happy Sylvia, I'm happy too. Erin responded. Eugen then grabbed Erin and told her that they both must leave too. Erin was confused and Eugen then reminded her that she had promised to help Felix. Erin was still puzzled, not until she heard Eugen say that they must go together with Felix and help him. Erin was so happy, she was a little bit emotional while giving thanks to Yujun. She also kisses Yujun as an appreciation for Yujun's kindness to them. Yujun then entered her house and went directly to Felix and told him that there was something she wanted to ask. Felix then looks at her as a sign of his approval to let Yujun speak. Yujun then asked him if she could come with them but Felix was confused. Miss Sylvia, where do you mean to go with us? Hubert asked. I want to join you, to help subjugate the demonic beast. I'd like to go with you and cook all sorts of tasty and nutritious foods. Take me with you, Yujun stated. Hubert smiled and asked the opinion of Felix since their captain was Felix. Unfortunately, Felix won't allow her to come. It's too dangerous. Perhaps, if you were a wizard with some offensive capabilities, it'd be a different story. Hubert said. Sylvia feels that Hubert belittled her capability but then Hubert said that he's not doubting Yujun's magical abilities. But it is common sense. For a support type wizard, to join a free company and go beyond the castle walls is very dangerous. Eugen asked why, and Felix replied, You're not asking because you don't know why, are you? Hubert then left them both as he needed to clean the plates. Eugen at the same time didn't think that Felix would say no as she was expecting that Felix wanted her to come. She was annoyed and forced to use her secret weapon. She summoned a banana tree beside her and then grabbed one then peeled it. She handed it to Felix while she tried to act cute. While acting cute to Felix, she's telling her that she really wants to go and that she will do her best. She was waving the banana fruit in front of Felix and Yu Jun was expecting Felix to allow her this time. Since Felix still didn't give an answer, she danced in front of him while asking him to let her go with them. I'm not going to stop until you say yes. What do you think? Yu Jun stated. She was begging Felix to allow her and she was dancing on her shoulder. She told Felix to look at her shoulder as it was dislocated. Felix believed it and immediately stood then stopped her from dancing. They were staring at each other's eyes. Felix checked Yu Jun's shoulder and said that it didn't look like it was dislocated. Yu Jun's face blushed as it made her heart flutter. She also feels embarrassed knowing that Felix really believes that she dislocated her shoulder even though it was supposed to be a joke. Still, she was eager to go hunting with Felix so she grabbed Felix's hands and promised to give him tasty fruit every day if he'll allow her to come. She also promised to make him ice cream and juice made with fresh vegetables too as long as Felix would take her with them. Felix was silent for a moment while Yu Jun waited for his answer. Felix suddenly pulled away his hands as he felt thrilled that their hands were touching. Yu Jun then thought that it was a no from Felix, but then, Felix asked her if she could ride a horse. Yu Jun was dumbfounded then Felix believed that Yu Jun couldn't. Yu Jun feels down and hopeless. Felix was questioning her and he sighed every time he didn't get any answer from the lady. He then called Hubert and ordered him to prepare a new saddle. Hubert then said yes while Yu Jun was so happy knowing that the saddle would be for her so it meant Felix already permitted her to come with them. She then touches Felix's hands once again then gives thanks to him. Felix slightly smiled while looking at how happy Yu Jun was. Meanwhile, they were all ready to go. Dennis informed Felix that they were all set so Felix immediately called Yu Jun to let her know that they would now leave. Yu Jun then headed outside. She stares at her house from the door and smiles, giving thanks to this house for being her home so far. 
her and then informs her that everyone is waiting for him. She also asked Yu Jun if she would be fine and Yu Jun only smiled at her as her response. Yu Jun closed the door and told the three men that she was now ready to go. Felix then rode to his horse and Yu Jun followed. Yu Jun was in front of Felix and she felt uncomfortable with the swaddle, especially since Felix was very close to her. She feels that their bodies and breaths touch each other. She feels a little bit awkward and she doesn't know what to do. Felix at the same time feels the hair of Yu Jun swaying right under his nose. He also smelled the fragrance of the lady. He looked away but he could not deny that Yu Jun smells good. They all then headed their way and Yu Jun's heart continuously pounded which she cannot explain as to why. They entered the forest. Yu Jun was looking around and was impressed seeing that the forest really does look like it's straight from the Middle Ages or some fantasy story. One thing that also makes her confused is that she feels progressively hotter and hotter. She thought it'd be cooler as they ventured further into the forest, but, for some reason, she felt stuffy. Felix suddenly asked her if she was fine. What do you mean? Yu Jun asked with a stuttering voice. As per Felix, he feels that Yu Jun seemed uncomfortable for a while now. Yu Jun tried to make it obvious but it turned out that Felix noticed. She then answered that she was okay with how they were. Felix then told her to hang on for a moment as they were almost at their destination. Yu Jun was thrilled as she felt that Felix was being more considerate than she thought. After a few minutes, they all stopped by and Felix told them that they'd rest in this place for tonight. He then got off from his horse and guided Yu Jun to go down. Yu Jun doesn't notice that he's waiting. She was thinking of what she would do to get off safely since it was higher than she imagined. She's also scared to get down by herself but she saw Felix extend his hand to her. Felix told her to hold his hand for her to get down. Yu Jun then followed what he said and safely got off the horse. She looked at Felix but she felt shy so she immediately turned around and gave thanks to him. She glanced back at Felix as she felt that her heart fluttered but the feelings left in a flash. And also, it seems like Felix acts like a stranger even if they're close. Meanwhile, Yu Jun finished preparing the ingredients for their meal. She was about to call someone to help her but as she turned around, Felix was behind him. She screamed in fear since she was startled. You scared me, she said and turned around once again. Felix then asked if she was preparing the food and she answered yes. She handed the pot of soup to Felix and at the same time, Dennis was looking at them. He was surprised to see Felix together with Yu Jun and followed Yu Jun's order. Felix asked Yu Jun where he would put it and Yu Jun told him to hold it for a few seconds. She then walked while Felix was following her. She used her plant magic to prepare some wood and made a ring out of vines then hung the pot. Everything was perfect as it came out better than she thought. She then called Dennis, asking him to light up a fire. Since only Felix knows that she can use various elemental magic, she refrains from using other elements for now. Dennis then lights a fire to the soup and Yu Jun then cooks the skewers. She also prepared the table and chairs, and both Dennis and Hubert were shocked knowing that Yu Jun brought all of these. Yu Jun then told them that she put some elbow grease in packing these things. She invited them to sit and she would join them after finishing the skewers. Felix went to her and asked what sort of dish she was preparing. Yu Jun then informed her that the dishes she prepares are called skewers. She proudly told Felix that it was very delicious and tasty. She bit one and swallowed it while Felix was just looking at her. He definitely didn't even want to look at meat, but the skewers Yu Jun was cooking looked very delicious to him. For Yu Jun, chicken skewers are the best. While eating it, she feels like she can leave now that she has eaten something. Riding was a lot harder than she thought it would be. She was completely exhausted. Felix on the other hand feels hungry while looking at Yu Jun eating. He thought that the meat Yu Jun was eating looked so delicious. After eating chicken skewers, Yu Jun then picked one beef skewer and tasted it. She suddenly paused and was surprised as she heard Felix telling her that he wanted two. Me too, give me that too, Felix said while pointing his finger to the skewer Yu Jun was holding. Yu Jun was very happy as she confirmed that Felix is now really showing an interest in the food. Yu Jun then checked the skewers, checking a cooked and warm skewer but then Felix said he didn't want it. Yu Jun was confused so Felix told her that he wanted the one she was eating. Yu Jun was still confused. She rattled as she thought that Felix was referring to the fruits. She then used her magic to summon fruits but Felix told her he didn't want the fruit. He pointed to the skewer Yu Jun was holding and said that this was what he wanted. The one you're eating. Give me that meat. He said. The one I was eating. Why? Yu Jun asked. Felix then honestly answered that he thought it would be no issue if he ate the one Yu Jun was eating. Yu Jun then realizes that Felix would be comfortable to eat as long as there is a sign that it's safe. She looked at the skewer she was holding and handed it to Felix while telling him to open his mouth. They were both staring at each other's eyes. Felix trusted Yu Jun very much so he took a bite which was only meat and Yu Jun felt disgusted since she believed it would be dry if one would only swallow meat. She then decided to pull the meat and veggies from the stick then told Felix to open his mouth again. Felix widely opened his mouth after finishing the meat he was eating. Yu Jun then inserted the meat and veggie skewer and informed him that it would be dry if it was only meat so he should eat it with eggplant and paprika so the vegetable juices would meet with the juices from the meat and create a whole new flavor. While she is talking, Felix smiles while swallowing the food in his mouth. He can really feel how sincere Yu Jun is towards food. And the way Yu Jun looked at him, he felt like she was sincerely hoping that he could enjoy the meal in the most delicious way possible. 
From now on, he wants to try his best too. On top of that, his taste buds are slowly coming back so he was thankful for Yu Jun for doing everything for him. Now, he found out that it isn't that he hates dishes. It's just that he was traumatized. On the other hand, Yu Jun was so happy knowing that Felix was now finally eating cooked food. Looking at his face, she believes Felix is enjoying it too. She gave another stick to Felix and Felix then ate it while Yu Jun was holding the stick. But then, this time, he feels that the texture is the same since his body is still rejecting it. He swallowed it quickly and Yu Jun noticed that he was barely chewing. She then told Felix that he must chew the food properly to avoid indigestion. She showed an example to Felix on how to properly chew but Felix chuckled as it looked like Yu Jun is a squirrel for him with her cheeks stuffed with food. He couldn't hold it and laughed so loud while Yu Jun was clueless as to why. But what's important for her is to finally see Felix laugh so loud like this. She then told Felix to stop laughing and eat more. The fairies were all shocked to see Felix eat cooked food. They were so happy and emotional since it had been a long time since the last time Felix ate cooked food. These fairies were born for Felix's happiness so that is why they can tell that Felix is very happy right now, and that's why they were very thankful to Yu Jun. Hubert and Dennis then invited them to sit so they could eat properly. Yu Jun then answered yes and joked around that one order of skewers was coming right up. The next day, they all rode their horses and as usual, Yu Jun was together with Felix. Although it has been a few days since she has ridden a horse, she still wouldn't be able to get used to it. That's why she believes that the phrase you suffer outside the comfort of your home really exists. Truthfully, she hadn't really thought about the hardship of free companies, but she wondered how hard it must have been for these men with her. On top of that, they hadn't even encountered any demonic beast yet. Even so, she couldn't believe it was this arduous just getting into the forest. Now that she thinks about it, she concludes that the other mercenary customers must have been surprised by her sudden disappearance. She regrets not telling them that she would leave. She believes that trust is the key to a successful business but like an idiot, she can say that she let her anger get to her and was complacent. If only the duke hadn't made such a proposal, she might not leave her home. But then, she believes it was she who couldn't say anything under pressure. While she was overthinking things, she suddenly shook her head which made Felix wonder if there was something wrong. All of a sudden, they heard a loud noise. Yu Jun got startled so she unintentionally moved closer to Felix and her hair flew to Felix's face. She was aware of it so she apologized to him. She asked Felix if it hurt but Felix just slightly smiled at her and got off from his horse. He told Yu Jun to hold tight then she tied the horse to the tree. Yu Jun then asked if there was a demonic beast that appeared and Felix answered yes. He instructed Yu Jun not to move from this area and to use her magic if needed to run away. When magic, you're able to use it, correct? He asked, and Yu Jun replied yes. Felix then looked at the place then ran away. While running, he heard Yu Jun telling her to be careful. Very well, Felix answered, then ran as fast as he could. He went to Hubert and Dennis then bought men and informed him that the beast's energy was unusual. At this moment, Erin heads back to Sylvia so the other fairies panicked, telling her that it's very dangerous. Erin was able to get to Yu Jun safely and Yu Jun then told her to hide her clothes. Yu Jun was nervous since she didn't see any demonic beast. She was looking around, wondering where the beast was. The beast started to come out from the land. It was a gigantic demonic beast and it was in front of the men ready to attack them at any moment. Yu Jun also witnessed it despite the fact that she was a little bit far from the three men. She was staring at the beast, thinking about what kind of beast it was. The three men started attacking it. Dennis and Felix charged at the beast while Hubert activated his water element and stopped the beast's arms from moving. Hubert then cut its arms using his water magic and its dark blood splattered. Yu Jun saw it with her two eyes. She almost vomited as it was so disgusting for her just by looking at it. She felt sick and she looked away as she could not look at it again since she was also scared. Felix at the same time runs at the back of the centipede. He was holding his sword and then slashed the centipede's head with it. The dark blood of the centipede coming from its head then splattered and Felix got also tinted. The centipede died and Sylvia is the only one Felix was thinking. He senses something so he immediately runs to Yu Jun, worrying that something might have happened to the lady. When he got to Yu Jun, he still saw Yu Jun above the horse. Yu Jun was crying while she uttered Felix's name. Felix was sad to see her cry and he didn't know why. Felix, is everyone alright? Yu Jun asked. And Felix then replied that they were not the people who would be bested by a demonic beast of that level. With his answer, Yu Jun realizes that the disgusting centipede is only a low rank. One thing that Felix also noticed is Yu Jun's face which becomes gray. He was worried and asked her if there was something wrong. Yu Jun extended her arms which confused Felix. She then told Felix to put her down and Felix immediately held her hands and guided her to get off the horse. The moment Yu Jun lands on the ground, she immediately vomits. Her body was shaking and Felix on the other hand was dumbfounded. He remembers that back then, he also vomited every time he was poisoned. Because of his clear memory, he thought that Yu Jun was also poisoned by someone. He doesn't know that Yu Jun only vomits as she hates the smell of blood from Felix's armor. Felix then looked at her and tapped her back. Don't leave anything in. Let it out, all of it. He said. He also asked Yu Jun to tell him who was the one who did it to her. Yu Jun blocked his hand and told him to stop hitting her back as she was hurt by the force of Felix every time he tapped Yu Jun's back. 
As she looked at Felix, she noticed Felix's face which was worried and nervous. She then asked him what's wrong but Felix answered, Should you really be asking me that right now? He grabbed Eugen's arms and asked her once more if who was the one who poisoned her. Eugen was puzzled. She was about to explain it but the smell of blood distracted her. Felix then used water magic and washed Eugen and even the inside of her mouth was cleaned. Eugen was surprised that Felix had water magic. She feels that she's going insane and she can't just act like she knows that Felix was traumatized from being poisoned. Felix also washed himself while asking Eugen if she was not poisoned. Eugen then answered, it's not. And Felix then asked if she was really okay. Erin then comes out and tells Felix that Sylvia was telling the truth. She also informed Felix that Sylvia was just in shock. The other fairies also appeared and were all worried for Eugen. They told Felix that Sylvia must have been scared knowing that she had never seen a demonic beast before. Eugen smiled at them and said that she was fine. It's just like everyone said. I'm fine. Thanks for worrying about me, Felix. She added. Felix feels relief after knowing that Eugen wasn't poisoned. It's not a big deal. Let's go. He said. They then continued to travel and arrived at the other area. They stopped by since Felix told them that they would set up a camp here and spend their night. He then glanced back at Eugen, offering his hands to guide Eugen get off again. Doing this to her, seems like he's a real prince. Since Eugen was embarrassed that Felix always helped her, she was thinking of learning how to get off on her own. To her surprise, Felix didn't put her down. She wondered why Felix did not let her walk on her own. She was about to say something but Felix put her down on the tree. She was leaning on the tree while Felix kneeled down in front of her. There will be even worse demonic beasts in the future. Tell me any time, even now, if you want to go back. I'll take you home, Felix said. Eugen was speechless. She realizes that Felix was right. She had lived forgetting the nature of this world she now leave in. She leave comfortably within the castle walls. This world is a fictional world. A dangerous world where demonic beasts exist. As the number of the demonic beasts gradually increases, in time they will invade the castle. Cottetition City will eventually disappear from the map. On top of that, if things continue according to the novel, then Felix, the main character, will go through more trials in the future. Eugen concludes that she won't be able to avoid them if she's to be by Felix's side. She still doesn't know much about this place, since such events have yet to affect her directly. It was awkward so she didn't want to think about it, to what kind of place she leave in, to what kind of events were happening. But, she's okay since it was her first time seeing a demonic beast. Now, she finally feels like she's making her own stand in this place. Finally, living in the same world as Felix. At the same time in the castle of Duke Lucino, he was sitting on the terrace while cutting the meat that his personal chef cooked. He never eats even a little so Aaron was thinking that there might be something Lucino was thinking. I lost my appetite, Lucino said, and Aaron was shocked thinking that the Duke was now tired of eating. He then ordered the maids to clean everything. Lucino was sad. He had no idea that such a day would come in his life. Sylvia was in his mind. It's already been a week since Sylvia disappeared. He even went to see Sylvia in her house in case she was sick. Just like the coachman said to him, it seems like Sylvia left the home. When he was observing Sylvia's house, he smelled a sweet smell that he had been perceiving. He decided to open the house and entered inside. As he went to the kitchen, he was amazed to see lots of plants. He entered Eugen's room and saw no one. He was sad as he concluded that Sylvia's really left. He was so confused since he was sure that Sylvia liked the kitchen that he gave her. He clearly remembers Sylvia's face the way she was blushing and smiling on that day, to the extent that it makes him want to see it once more. For him, Eugen's smile is very lovely. He denied it to himself and told himself that he just loved seeing Sylvia working so hard because of her skill which was indeed amazing. In addition, he cannot forget that Sylvia always brings food that he has never seen before. He was thankful to Sylvia for making his days full of surprises and fun. Even the chef of the Duke's family spent days and days debating on preparing a single dish, but Sylvia pulled it off every day. That's why he wanted her to be beside him all the time since it was full of mysteries and fun beside her. He even did her a favor with the hope that she could cook comfortably in his family. But now, it makes him upset wondering why Sylvia went away the moment he introduced the kitchen to her. He wondered if he didn't have any choice but to accept that Sylvia really ran away from him and declined his offer. He cannot think of a reason why. He cannot figure out why Sylvia declined his offer. He got out of Eugen's home and commanded Aaron to pick all the fresh fruits from Sylvia's house and bring them back to the castle and also find someone who can take good care of Sylvia's house. Aaron didn't reply while Lucino entered the carriage. Now that he can't eat the food that Sylvia makes even for a day makes him feel uneasy and restless. But since he hadn't eaten for a week, he was thinking of searching for Sylvia no matter what. Going back to the forest, Eugen was done preparing their food and gave it to the men. Upon eating it, Dennis then commented that it was very delicious. Eugen then smiled and informed him that this food is called red bean bingsu. It's cool and slowly melting, and sweet too. I've never eaten anything like this since I was born, Dennis added. He also asked Eugen how she made something like this so delicious that even his mother wouldn't be able to follow Eugen's cooking skills. After seeing it, they flinched and felt so down. 
everyone is saddened by the thought of their family, given that they won't be able to return to their hometown. Obviously, it was an unavoidable choice for the sake of Felix, and as expected, they would really miss their own family. Seeing them sad makes Yu Jun also feel pity for them. To forget the sadness, Yu Jun showed them her own made alcohol and even prepared side dishes to go along. Felix helped her so she gave thanks to Felix. She then puts each cup and gives it to them while explaining that this alcohol she made doesn't have a high level of toxicity, and would only help them sleep well. She glanced at Felix and asked if he also wanted to drink. Felix accepted the cup and smelled it first. He then commented that the alcohol seemed good. Yu Jun then told her to try it with some side dishes. Felix looked at the side dishes Yu Jun handed to him while thinking that Yu Jun's attitude cared about what he ate. He also feels that Yu Jun is different from before. He remembered that the lady was cold to him at first, but now it seemed like she looked at him with an affectionate gaze. He was not drinking the cup of alcohol he was holding and Yu Jun wondered why. She then realizes something. She grabbed the cup Felix was holding and drank a little bit of the alcohol to show Felix that it was clean. She then gave it back to Felix and told him that he could now drink it. Felix was speechless so Yu Jun thought that Felix didn't like it. Felix then accepted the cup while recalling that Yu Jun helped him verify that he could drink the alcohol with ease of mind. He was just thinking for a moment, but it seemed like he was hesitating to her. He wondered why Yu Jun treated his actions so naturally with no suspicion or rejection as if it's obvious. He then concludes that the reason why Yu Jun rejected the food is because she already knows all of his secrets, and that Eren might have told her. He didn't want to think about it but he was afraid that Yu Jun may only feel pity for him and that might be the reason why Yu Jun looked at him with a gaze. Yu Jun suddenly stood and glanced at Felix. She moved her face closer to Felix and whispered to him. I'll come after checking on the kids. Because of it, Felix suddenly thinks he is becoming more and more crazy to Yu Jun. When the night came, Yu was about to go back to their camp. She went to the fairies earlier and realized now that it was already later than she thought. She concludes that the men must have done drinking and cleaning at this moment. As she headed back, she bumped into Felix. She was startled at first but realized that it was only Felix. Felix moved closer to her and Yu Jun clearly saw that Felix's body is now reddish. She panicked thinking that it might be because of some allergies but then she was sure that she only put good ingredients in the alcohol and the side dishes. What's wrong with your skin? She asked. But Felix didn't reply and only got so close to her face. Where have you been? Felix whispers to Yu Jun's ear then stares back at Yu Jun. Felix touched Yu Jun's shoulders and leaned on her. Yu Jun was thinking about what happened to Felix. She pushed Felix's body and asked him if he was drunk. Felix didn't give a clear answer. Yu Jun pushed his body again as she wanted to avoid him so the others would not be misunderstood if they saw them so close. She looked at their camp and saw Hubert and Dennis unconscious because they had drunk all the alcohol. Yu Jun was shocked since she didn't expect the three to drink all of it in a short span of time. She looked back to Felix and asked how much he drank. Felix didn't answer as he was puzzled. Yu Jun cannot believe that Felix, someone who usually eats whatever someone else has tried first, is this drunk. She then concludes that Felix unknowingly kept drinking because he was drunk. The cup you give me, Felix uttered. Yu Jun believes that Felix is referring to the one glass of alcohol she gave to him. Felix becomes more red and then asks the same question to Yu Jun about where she went. Yu Jun then replied that she went to see the fairies. She then believes that Felix is very weak to liquor. She told Felix to go inside the tent and just sleep so he could rest. Their foreheads are touching so Yu Jun slowly pushes Felix but Felix suddenly grabs his hand and asks him if she likes the moon. Yu Jun was confused. The moon, I asked if you like the moon, Felix said. But Yu Jun wondered why Felix was suddenly talking about the moon out of the blue. Of course, is there anyone who hates the moon? She answered. Felix then let go of Yu Jun's hands and held her waist. He suddenly flew while carrying Yu Jun and Yu Jun was startled while looking at the ground. They flew, heading to the tree, and landed at the branch above. Hey, look, it's the moon, Felix said while pointing his finger to the sky. Yu Jun then looked at it and they both stared together at the moon that was too big to their sight. Yu Jun was so happy seeing the moon, and Felix suddenly let Yu Jun know that his mother's name is Luna. He said that his mother's name was the name that his grandfather gave her because she was beautiful like the moon. Whenever his mother looked at him, he always felt like he owned the world. Yu Jun was very sad upon hearing it knowing that Felix missed her mother so much. Felix added that he could feel his mother's affection with his whole body, like the soft moonlight, like the moon that is soft but shines radiantly. He cannot forget that the one who loved him dearly is his mother. He glanced back to the moon and to Yu Jun that is now speechless because of the pity she felt for Felix. Why did you do that? Felix asked, but Yu Jun didn't understand his question. Felix suddenly touched Yu Jun's chin and Yu Jun then looked at his face. You aren't my mother, but why, how come do you look at me with those eyes? He said. He let go of Yu Jun and ordered her to answer his confusion. He walked closer to Yu Jun's body but Yu Jun looked away. Why do you look at me with such affectionate eyes? Felix asked once again. He touched Yu Jun's chin for the second time and told her to tell him why. I did, Yu Jun asked, and Felix replied yes. Seems like Yu Jun didn't agree with Felix. Felix then asked her if he was wrong. Yu Jun was silent for a few seconds then answered that it was because they were friends. Then, are you my girlfriend? Felix asked which made Yu Jun startled and her face blushed while Felix's hand was on her cheek. 
What are you talking about exactly? Girlfriend or girl who is a friend? Yu Jun questioned. Felix suddenly passed out on her causing her to slip on the tree and they both fell together. Felix was still hugging Yu Jun while Yu Jun was trying to call his name to wake him up. But then, all she heard was Felix snoring. You punk, are you falling asleep after making my heart flutter? Yu Jun said, and she was also hugging Felix. As they almost landed on the ground, she immediately used her wind magic element and carried Felix like a bride. They safely landed and she regrets bringing up alcohol and letting Felix drink it. While she was venting her annoyance, Felix was peacefully sleeping on her chest. The next morning, Yu Jun prepared breakfast for everyone. Up until this time, she was still thinking of what happened last night and she could not get over it. She was annoyed and even screamed the moment Dennis and Hubert came out of their tent. Two men were startled, and Felix also came out from the tent while holding his head since he felt pain. Dennis and Hubert also had a hangover, and Hubert senses that Yu Jun was mad at them so he apologizes to the lady. At the same time, Felix wondered why he woke up from someone's tent. He went to the table as he was very hungry so he asked Yu Jun that they should now eat. Yu Jun was evilly smiling and suddenly stood while slamming the table. Sure, my dear boyfriend. She answered. She looked at Felix and told him to dig in since she already prepared everything. Boyfriend, what's that about? Felix answered in confusion. Yu Jun already sat down and crossed her arms. She was still mad at Felix and she didn't give an answer. Felix wondered what happened to Yu Jun but then he didn't force the lady to answer his question. He stares at the soup Yu Jun's prepared for him. He gets more hungry and immediately sits down despite being nervous because of Yu Jun's silence. Yu Jun glared at him and then suddenly smiled widely while handing over a cup of hangover cured drink to Felix. She told Felix to drink it all before eating and Felix then accepted it while giving thanks to her. He then drank it but then he was so disappointed with the taste. Yu Jun smiles upon seeing his reaction, and for her, the taste serves him right. Meanwhile, they continued to explore the forest but it was only the two of them and the fairies. While traveling, the fairies were talking. Erin was thrilled as she never thought that Felix would bring up Queen Luna, his mother, to Yu Jun. The pink fairy then said that it was the first time Felix mentioned his mother after Queen Luna's death. Erin was so proud of Yu Jun and boasted that Yu Jun was very incredible since Felix shared about his mother to her. At this time, Yu Jun was tired since she couldn't sleep deeply last night because of what happened to them with Felix. Felix looked at her and since her head was extremely headbanging, Felix couldn't focus at all on the road. And, it would be better for him to let Yu Jun lean on him. He slowly grabbed Yu Jun's shoulder and leaned her on his chest. Yu Jun was sleeping deeply while Felix felt thrilled just by looking at her face. He continued to travel but he arrived at an unfamiliar place. He was looking around, wondering where they were. Also, he can hear a faint sound nearby. He tried to follow the noise believing that it wasn't coming from running water knowing that there are no bodies of water in this forest. She slowed down his horse as he concluded that it might be another demonic beast. Yu Jun was still sleeping soundly but she woke up when she felt the horse stop. She stretched her body while yawning loudly. She turned her head around while asking Felix where they were. Felix then told her that he didn't know either. Yu Jun wiped her eyes and she screamed when she suddenly got out of balance. Felix then told her to be careful and she then looked at Felix and apologized to him. Felix then pushed her body on him and told her to just lean on his body. Yu Jun's face blushed because of what Felix did, but then, she refused. She was cut off when Felix told her to hold on. Felix then ordered his horse to move and the horse then ran fast. After a few minutes, the horses stop as they have arrived at a lake. In this lake, there are animals drinking the water. Yu Jun was speechless since she was amazed by the surroundings. All of a sudden, there was someone who entered the bush without them seeing it clearly. Who are you? Felix asked, and at the same time, his horse neighed and lifted up. Felix immediately grabbed his sword, but then they heard someone crying. Yu Jun was very curious so she told Felix to stop as he might have scared the person in the bush. She then gets off the horse by using magic and Felix warns her knowing that it's very dangerous for her to just check it by herself. Still, Yu Jun didn't listen and straightly entered the bush. As she entered, she was surprised to see a kid. The kid was sad while looking at Yu Jun. Felix then appeared since he really didn't want to let Yu Jun alone. Yu Jun then informed him about the kid and Felix then told the kid that it is dangerous for a kid like him outside the castle. The kid cried so loud and screamed that he was so scared. He was calling his mom while crying and both Yu Jun and Felix panicked seeing the kid cry. Yu Jun then grabbed the kid and asked him if they scared him. The kid continuously cried and Yu Jun hugged him tight and asked him to calm down. No more crying. Yeah, you're doing great, she said. She looked at the kid's face who was now crying in silence. But then, the kid cried so loud again. Yu Jun tapped his back and asked him not to cry. She summoned a strawberry and put one in the kid's mouth. The kid finally stopped crying and he was surprised with the taste of the strawberry. How is it? It's good, right? Yu Jun asked, and she told the kid that there was still a lot which was on their side. 
The kid was drooling upon seeing lots of strawberries. The kid picked more of it while Yu Jun started to ask him questions. The first thing she wanted to know was if the kid knew where his mother was. But then, the kid replied that he didn't know. Yu Jun then called Felix and asked him that they should find the kid's mother since she believed that the mother should be nearby. Felix was staring at Yu Jun and admitted it himself that Yu Jun was very lovely. He didn't give an answer as he was speechless just by looking at Yu Jun's face. Yu Jun called him numerous times but he still isn't responding. Yu Jun was wondering why Felix didn't give an answer, and at the same time, the green fairy said that there was no demonic energy in this area. The red fairy then shared with them that she felt a familiar energy from this place. The pink fairy agreed and added that she could feel the energy of Eternum. Felix gets back to his senses and realizes that he also senses the black dragon's energy in this place. He wondered why, so he came out from the bush and headed to the lake since he was confused as to why he heard the sound of running water even though there was only a lake here. As he stared at the lake, he saw his own reflection. The water was shaking but he was still clueless. He then asked Clover, the green fairy, to check where the water down the lake was flowing to. Clover then proudly told him to leave it to her and the red fairy also joined Clover's mission. At this time, Yu Jun went to him and asked what was wrong. She was still carrying the kid and let him down so he could comfortably move. Yu Jun then looked at the water while asking Felix the same question. Felix was just looking at her face without responding. Then, Yu Jun suddenly noticed something. She got something in the water and lifted up her hands then suddenly screamed, Jackpot! Felix was startled and wondered what happened to the lady. It turned out that Yu Jun only found a white whelks. She was jumping with happiness while Felix didn't understand why she was very happy. Yu Jun gets more whelks and she was very happy while saying that this is the first time she has seen seafood in this world. Felix then asks her what Welks is and he feels gross while asking Yu Jun if she is thinking of eating it. You have no idea how good these taste. You wouldn't even notice if someone died next to you because you're so amazed by the taste. Yu Jun replied. At this moment, the two fairies came back and reported to Felix that there was a cave beneath the lake. Clover also said that she believes that the sound of running water came from the cave that is below the lake. After reporting to Felix, these two fairies stared at the kid who was still eating strawberries. Surprisingly, the boy also looked at them back so Clover concluded that he might see them. The fairies then flew above the boy and the boy was still staring at them. Because of it, Clover was very sure that this boy could really see them. The red fairy agreed to Clover while the other fairies also wanted to check it themselves. They all believed that the boy must have a pure heart which is the reason why he can see them. While they were flying to the kid, Yu Jun was looking at their cuteness. She suddenly pinched the kid's cheek and told him not to tell other adults about the cute fairies. The kid then looked at her and nodded. Yu Jun then asked him if he still remembered his address since she was worried that they might not be able to find his mother. Fortunately, they heard a voice calling the name Louis and said, It's me, your dad. The three then looked in the direction where they heard the voice and they then saw an emotional lady and a man together with a few people behind them. The kid then immediately ran to them with a wide smile on his face as it turned out that he was Louis and both were his parents. Louis hugged his mother tightly while his mother uttered his name and became emotional because of her happiness in finding Louis. Yu Jun seemed to feel sadness. She glanced at Felix and called his name. Didn't you say that people aren't allowed to live outside the castle walls? Yu Jun whispered. Because of what she did, Felix's ear, neck, and cheek blushed. He ignored this feeling he felt and answered yes to Yu Jun's question. He then informs Yu Jun that he cannot feel the presence of any demonic beast in this area and there is even no pungent smell either. Yu Jun was observing the lake and said that there might be something in this lake. When she was about to check, she noticed the parents of Louis staring at her while smiling. They both then gave thanks to Yu Jun for staying with the kid and for giving him fruit to calm him down. What are you doing here in the first place? You're outside the castle walls right now and there are demonic beasts roaming around. We somehow ended up in this place, but we encountered a demonic beast yesterday in a nearby area. Yu Jun stated. A grandfather then replied, saying that they were just looking for a place to leave. He explained that they began living in a nearby cave after finding out coincidentally that demonic beasts don't come into the lake. He introduced himself by the name Benjamin and informed Yu Jun that they were from Liuyo Castle in the Kapitas Kingdom. The people addressed him as chief and it seems like they were not in favor of Benjamin telling Yu Jun and Felix about their backgrounds. Upon learning everything from Benjamin, Felix was shocked. Yu Jun then looked at him and was worried knowing that Kapitas Kingdom was where Felix leave before. He holds Felix's hand and then asks the people about their reason for coming to this place all the way from Kapitas Kingdom. Have you stayed here? But there should be many demonic beasts around. What's the reason for coming to this place? She added. The people became sad the moment Benjamin said that they were nothing more than normal peasants. They were from a small village called Rosso and they didn't want to leave the place they had spent their whole lives in either. Benjamin concludes that Yu Jun and Felix were from the Empire so he believes that both won't not understand them. 
He also stated that there was a certain rumor that said that the queen went mad and that the other nobles are demanding incredibly high taxes from the civilians. Yu Jun was shocked upon knowing it. According to Benjamin, their village was a small and peaceful place. However, after a new lord came to power, they had to work all day long. They harvested wheat again and again, but they somehow got into debt and the amount kept increasing. The worst thing is that his daughter was taken away because of that debt. Not only his daughter but also young men and women from their villages. At this point, Felix and Yu Jun held tight at each other's hands. Benjamin and the other man continued to explain that they had protested against the increasing debt but the nobles started attacking their village with magic. Although it was a difficult time, Benjamin couldn't die knowing that his son and daughter had been stolen from him. So in order to leave, they had no choice but to leave the castle. After many casualties, they arrived at this place. They were all that was left of their villages. After telling everything to Yu Jun and Felix, they asked them not to tell the Empire their whereabouts since this is the only place they can go and leave again peacefully. They even bowed down to Felix and Yu Jun just to beg them. We're just one of the many mercenary groups. We lost our way and ended up here. We didn't come to send you away, Yu Jun replied, and the people feel relief. While Yu Jun was holding Felix's hand, she could feel how cold it was. She believes that everything must have been quite shocking for Felix since his stepmother is leading his kingdom into chaos. To lighten up the mood, she smiled and asked the people where they got their food every day to survive since the only edible she could see were the whelks she got from the lake. Are those called whelks? They had a very questionable taste and texture, Benjamin said. And the parents of Louis also said that they're filling their stomachs with the whelks and fruits and plants they find nearby. Yu Jun was so upset knowing that these people were living in harsh conditions. She was thinking of a way to help these people somehow, but while thinking, Clover suddenly told her that there were a lot of ugly things deeper down the lake. The Red Fairy also agreed and even said that those ugly things are so bunched at the bottom of the lake. Because of what they said, Yu Jun was able to think of a way to help the people. She then asked them if they could stay overnight and Benjamin then told her that there's no need to ask permission since mercenaries dealing with the demonic beasts are always welcome for them. Then, we'll be in your care, Yu Jun said. All of a sudden, they heard the sound of hoovering horses. They immediately looked in the direction and they got also afraid upon seeing shadows of two men riding in their cavalry. That's all for today, thank you so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wish to have another part of this recap, please give us at least 2000 likes, and don't forget to comment and subscribe to our channel for more content like this, until next time.